Homecoming at the University of Maryland brings an electric atmosphere to College Park for the Turks. But what a difference a week makes for visiting Clemson. One week later, one loss later, Clemson quietly disembarked a different bus over 500 miles from Howard's Rock. No longer undefeated, but with much on the line. College football on ESPN is presented by Cars.com. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. The Clemson Tigers are now 6-1, but BCS Bulbs are very much alive. Today, they face 5-2 Maryland. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick, Ed Cunningham. It's great to have you with us. Janine Edwards will join us shortly. Last week's loss against Florida State for Clemson was such a crushing disappointment. You have to wonder if there's carryover from last week. Particularly the Tiger fans want to know if their team can bounce back, especially their quarterback, Taj Boyd. For the last few years for Dabo Sweeney and his staff, it really has been so goes Taj, so goes the game. And unfortunately, it got off to an awful start last week. Not the quarterback's fault. Stanton Seckinger, the first offensive play, fumbles, Florida State recovers, and Boyd never recovered. Got out of his rhythm, fumbled on a missed assignment there, returned for a touchdown threw some balls he should not have thrown. Now, last year at the end of the regular season, Boyd played terribly against South Carolina, but then bounced back the next week and played very well against LSU. I suspect we'll see the same thing today against Maryland. All right, Ed, for more on Clemson, Janine Edwards with head coach Dabo Sweeney. Coach, a lot of people did not see that lopsided loss to Florida State coming, including you guys. What was the reaction of your players immediately afterwards and in the days since then? That's all behind us. D disappointed. You know, we lost a big game, and uh, it's all about this game. It's all about Maryland. That's our focus, trying to play good Clemson football today. Now, your quarterback, Taj Boyd, he had struggled a little bit at times in that game, and he puts a tremendous amount of pressure on himself. What did you say to him before coming out here? We focus on all the great things he does that he's done for five years here. Uh, didn't have a good game last week, but again, it's about these four quarters. It's about here and now, and, uh, you know, everybody's anxious to go play and, you know, get back at it. He told me he wants to have fun again today. Well, fun's in the winning. <laughs> Fun's in the winning. We ain't had a lot of fun this week. Fun's in the winning. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. I think we just found a new slogan. Fun's in the winning, and indeed it is. Clemson with only one loss this year. Maryland with only two, but one came last week against Wake Forest, and in that game, they lost their starting quarterback, their starting running back, their starting tight end, and their two top wide receivers. Five starters in one week. What does Randy Edsel do with that? What is amazing, though, is in his third year, this guy is a sensational program builder, meaning, like Dabo Sweeney, is a very good recruiter, has built an incredible base here. Believe it or not, when I went out to practice on Thursday, I was blown away. The second-line players for Maryland look like guys who compete, can compete at this level. They played them a lot. I think they'll be better on offense than people think tuning in early to this game. Bradley Pinion, very good kicker as it's set up at the 35-yard line. Clemson won the toss, deferred to the second half. William Likely and Laverne Jacobs are deep. To the goal line. And Likely out to about the 19. Caleb Rowe gets the call, a quarterback for Maryland. He was the hero of the Terps' comeback win in Virginia, has some real skills as a drop-back passer. The question will be, where does he get production from? His two wide receivers, his tight end, and his running back all gone. Well, here's a guy who the second-string receivers that are out there with him, he's been working with since spring, summer, and fall. They do have some speed. The thing that they'll have to try to generate without C.J. Brown is a little more run game. And this is Albert Reed trying to do just that. Reed up to the 23-yard line. 
Reed out of Washington, D.C. He's more of a downhill runner than the previous starter, Brandon Ross, who was injured. And Maryland doing what they have not done, and that's huddle and why, Ed. One of the things that Mike Loxley does as the offense coordinator is a very fast offense, but Randy Edsel on Sunday said with our two top receivers down, our top tight end down, all of the defensive injuries that we have had, we have to go to a more standard, slow down offense, pound the ball, and try to shrink this game. This is a global decision by the head coach, and I think a good one. You're going to take every possible second off. Reed again up to the 25, be about four yards shy of a first down. DJ Reader with the tackle. Let's take a look at our impact matchup brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Laverne Jacobs and Amba Etatawa are two guys that the quarterback Caleb Rowe has done just a really good job of getting timing together. And for Clemson, Martin Jenkins and Darius Robertson, Robinson, Gary Peters out. Jenkins battling a ton of injuries. Robertson is Robinson is the only healthy corner Clemson has had all season. Row five yards deep, a four-man Clemson rush. He has time and throws it through the hands of Malcolm, Malcolm Culmer. That is a catchable ball, and the only chance Maryland has today, when you have third and short, and the quarterback gets the ball to you, you have to convert. And I think this is a sun issue. As the sun is creeping across the field, look how the quarterback is in shade. This ball has flown pretty hot and flat and I think Colmer I think his eyes got caught between the sun and the shade and I don't think he ever picked up that ball Renfro back to punt averages 41 7 a kick and Adam Humphreys with blinding speed is deep He's averaging 11 yards a return kicking into the wind which will really knock down those kicks a low line drive kick this time and Humphreys fumbled the football but it looks like Clemson got it back inside the 30. Nice stick by Sean Petty on special teams to maybe jar that one loose. It was actually a wonderful kick by Renfro. You mentioned how he kind of drove it. It was into the wind, and the wind held it up a little bit, and Humphreys let that ball get into his chest, took his eye off it. Very, very lucky bounce for Clemson. Remember, their first offensive play last week was a fumble. Clemson comes out, they want to run the ball against the depleted Maryland defense, and they do with Roderick McDowell, brought down by Sean Davis. Taj Boyd, Clemson's record-setting quarterback. Number one in school history in passing yards. Number one, or number four, rather, in ACC passing yards all time. Second in total offense in ACC history. And right now, he's probably this team's best running back as well. They run him a lot. Flanker screen to Watkins. The former freshman All-American gets up to the 40-yard line. And, and with Taj Boyd, it's really been two games in a row that this offense has struggled. Boston College took Clemson all the way into the fourth quarter. And you mentioned that Taj Boyd's been the rest, best running back. Really miss Andre Ellington. And I think this offense really misses DeAndre Hopkins, the slot receiver and boundary receiver from last year. Another hit, this time to Bryant. And Martavis Bryant able to get eight yards on his own. And this is a Clemson team with a lot still to play for. They can, if they win out, they can likely get into a BCS bowl game, finish in the top five. And they have had no problem finding holes in this Maryland defensive line. McDowell with the tackle, or McDowell with the scamper, as he gets all the way down to the 35-yard line. This uh, second and third level, the linebackers and defensive backs for Maryland have just been destroyed by injury. Out Abner Logan, a freshman there, just un unable to make the play at the line of scrimmage. Flanker screen to Watkins. They have moved him this year as the snap from center was bobbled by Boyd. Watkins used to be singled up on the other side. Now he's a group of three wide receivers on this side. How does that change what he does? Well, they move him so much. They were going to try to put him into the boundary, which is what DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins but did, because it gives you a lot of one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. But they go back to moving. I think it's more like they used him as a freshman than they did last year, which, as you know, that freshman year was just unreal. To the people who saw him play in person, 
I think it was a consensus. He was the best player there was. Boyd dumps it off to McDowell just before he's taken down on a sack. McDowell gets it to the 32-33 yard line. Marcus Whitfield, who was Maryland's star linebacker, did not get the sack. Sammy Watkins in 2012 ended up with some decent numbers. He had a stomach ailment. He had been arrested during the offseason for marijuana possession, was suspended, just never, never got going. But boy, he, he does look like the guy he did look like in 2011. Boyd short set, throws back shoulder. Great throw to Martavius Bryant. Bryant down to the 15, a gain of 17. And, and this Clemson offense has been trying to get a second and third receiver going along with Adam Humphreys and Sammy Watkins and Brian a guy who's been a little inconsistent but early on that was a nice stop and catch. Watkins on the right side taken out of bounds Maryland by the way missing its two starting corners as well getting ready for this one I thought we were doing another California game Ed. Uh, Cal a team that's lost eight defensive starters Dexter McDougal and Jeremiah Johnson both out at corner a lot of youth now for Maryland in that secondary McDowell caught up in the backfield by Matt Robinson who's coming back into the starting lineup after a shoulder injury replaces Alex Twine who was filling in for him because Twine hurt his shoulder and last week watching the film of Ryan Norton the center and the shotgun snap to Taj Boyd it was off and hard to handle that one was a little hard Boyd should have handled it but that was just a completely mishandled snap and messed up the handoff Zach Brooks number 24 is in at a running back spot and it's third and nine for the Tigers. They can get a first down at the Maryland five. Good protection for Boyd. And throws out of the end zone. Off the hands of Isaac Goings for the Terps, who was the closest man to it. And this has got to be considered a win for Maryland, just not giving up the touchdown and forcing Chandler Catanzaro to try a field goal. And that secondary we were just talking about, who's down in a safety, too. Anthony Nixon for Maryland out with the turf toe, down three starters. That was terrific coverage. Boyd had to throw that away. Catanzaro, one of the best there is. He's made 31 of his last 33 field goals. This from 31 yards. He's money. And with 10.27 to go, first quarter, Clemson breaks on top of Maryland. 3 nothing. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the U.S. Army. There's strong, then there's Army strong. See strength like no other at GoArmy.com. Welcome back to the University of Maryland where Clemson has taken a 3-0 lead over the Terps. If you were with us for the opening series, Maryland's going to try to slow down the pace of the game, but if you only keep the ball for three plays, you haven't slowed it down very much. Well, no matter what your offense is, three and out is bad. No doubt. Likely is deep. Balls out of the end zone. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, Mike, Clemson offensive coordinator Chad Morris says he is disheartened with the inconsistency that the offense has been showing. He says, we just have not been playing well at key positions, and we're so simple and vanilla right now. You could go down to Lake Travis Medical School in Texas, and they could be calling our plays. He said it's not about effort. It's about sloppy mistakes. And I can tell you, when the offense came off the field after that first series, there was a lot of coaching going on from both Morris and Dabo Sweeney. Chad Morris, Janine, certainly used to rampant success in everything he coaches. Reed again, they'll try to run straight up the middle. Good room for Reed. Up to the 31 yard line, and we'll get an update from the studio on Reese Davis. All right, Mike, Taco Bell studio update. Number one team in the country, Alabama taking on Tennessee. Didn't take the time long. About a minute and a half. Amari Cooper had 162 yards receiving against the Vols last year. Goes for 54 there. Tied up 7-0. Reese, thank you very much. We have 9.57 and counting here in the first quarter at Maryland. The Terps playing with backups at five skill positions in this game on offense. 
quarterback keeper, and that's Ricardo Young comes in to run what they call the wild crab formation of Vic Beasley took him down and Ricardo Young a multi athlete came in as a quarterback but they're just trying to get some type of run game going with CJ Brown out and Vic Beasley who has been having a monster year was unblocked and it just took too long and there's a look at CJ Brown the normal starting quarterback for Maryland who was out with what they call a trunk injury suffered last week against Wake Forest. Caleb Rose short set sidearms one complete to Laverne Jacobs Jacobs straight down the middle of the field touchdown 71 yards split the defense in half and they weren't going to get him. And for Clemson fans, this has to feel a little bit like the other night when Florida State hit him in the mouth early. The point after is good. And Maryland pleasing its homecoming crowd at Bird Stadium with a 71 yard strike safety Travis blanks completely out of position for Clemson and last week against Florida State you started to see some cracks in this secondary maybe Maryland has found them ESPN college football is presented by cars.com get the right car without all the drama cars.com all drive no drama and in part by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado this is Maryland's neutral buoyancy research facility that allows research to be done in a weightless environment. It's the only one of its kind in the world housed on a university campus. I wonder what the temp of that water is. Mid 70s. I hope it's warmer than that. Yeah, it got to winter quick here, didn't it? Yes, it did. There's frost on your car in the morning. That's winter to me. Watkins and Green are deep to receive as Maryland has shot Clemson with a 7-3 advantage. Watkins trying to turn the corner, cut off and wisely steps out of bounds. One of the big issues for Clemson last year was they have had a devastated secondary with injuries, and they just had youth and experience here Travis Blanks who's a true sophomore played a lot last year goes to the middle safety he is in perfect position to make this tackle look I mean he, he could not be any better but look at the angle he takes to his right and Laverne working back towards the middle the defense was called right it was just not executed properly and Caleb Rowe the quarterback for Maryland getting some confidence with that throw read option to McDowell off the right side gaping hole and then he's turned back in after he reaches the 34 gain of nine. Davis came up from his safety spot to make the tackle. They found something on the right side. Maryland, you wouldn't think it, but they have the second most big plays in the ACC just behind FSU. And with Stefan Diggs and Dion Long out for Maryland, they still have guys who can make some plays. We saw that with Laverne a moment ago. McDowell dives ahead. He'll get the first down stop by Keith Bowers. And this is a Maryland team. Remember last year they went through four starting quarterbacks ended up having to train a linebacker as quarterback. So they're they're used to next man up around here. Boyd had a little bobble on the snap gets to Watkins. You know going back and watching Watkins in 2011 then we saw them I think four times last year in person. Yes. And then watching the film yesterday against Florida State, he's doing a much better job of catching the ball away from his body. He is so sensationally gifted with his legs, but he's a better catcher this year. Boyd under pressure, scrambles. Taken down in midfield. Good hustle by Marcus Whitfield, who just got a hand on him and would not let him go. And the Clemson coaches wanted a horse collar tackle on the end there but they didn't get it I did not think that was a horse collar because Whitfield did not pull Boyd down in the immediate action after he grabbed the back of his jersey plus I think it was all jersey didn't get inside McDowell again straight ahead on a power run inside the 40 well the rule says 
either the jersey or the top of the shoulder pads. So if you grab inside the jersey or top of the shoulder pads and make a tackle in the immediate action after the play, that's supposed to be a penalty. But it didn't look to me like it was immediately after he grabbed it. Quick pass to Adam Humphreys, and Humphreys will get within maybe a yard. Let's go back and take a look. This is a big safety issue. Yeah, it's the jersey. So this is a good no call. And again, Whitfield didn't pull him down in the immediate action. So good no call there by the ACC officials. Second down, one yard to go. Second and one. Too many second and ones for Maryland on defense. That's just indefensible. Breaking it outside is Brooks. And Brooks will have a first down at the Maryland 24 yard line. But this really, I think, shows one of the holes in this Clemson offense. They can't get push in the middle of this offensive line. They're playing really well at the left tackle position of Brandon Thomas, but the middle of this offensive line is just getting no push. And I, I think that's going to hurt them down the road, especially against a team like South Carolina. Straight up the middle for a couple with Brooks. It, it was it was amazing to hear Chad Morris say that Brandon Thomas is a dominating players. The other ten guys aren't playing that well. Well, they threw Adam Humphreys in there and said he was playing okay. They finally threw him a bone. But yeah, this offensive line in the middle of this offensive line, they they just did not play, have not played well actually in the last two weeks. Second and long. Boyd sits in the pocket, throws near side, incomplete. Intended for Seconder, his tight end, Isaac Goins, was right there. And once again, this secondary that has been depleted for Maryland. They're down a corner or two corners and a safety at least today. And there was nobody home for Boyd. Now you've got to think Martavis Bryant, number one, who has such a size mismatch down here at the bottom, might be somebody to look at. Third and long. Can Maryland hold and force another field goal drop? Boy, draw play. And cutting it back inside McDowell. It looked like they made the wrong read and gave it to McDowell, but he turned what could have been no gain into a first down. And this is the problem for Maryland right now up front defensively. They just don't quite have the finishers to make the tackle because that was defense perfectly. Wonderful read by McDowell, though, to pick up that first down. And they'll whistle this one dead. I think it's going to be a substitution. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 men in the formation. Half the distance to the goal. First down. One of the things that uh, we were talking with Randy Etzel yesterday, one of the rules in college football that helps the defense is if the offense substitutes, the defense is given at least three seconds to match that substitution. And Etzel said they were going to try to substitute every time, even if just one guy. And I wonder if they got crossed up there and didn't get the guy off that they expected to come off. Spotted just inside the five. McDowell. Nothing there this time. Cole Ferrand, one of the inside linebackers. And the one thing that Clemson has been very good is at short yardage, and that's because their quarterback, Taj Boyd, you mentioned earlier in the game, Mike, he's probably their best running back since Andre Ellington graduated after last year. So this is a place where you may expect some type of quarterback run. And he's really bigger than all the running backs. Yeah, and has a really good five pounds. And has a very good feel for it as well. Yes, he does. Boyd, quick look, throws for Bryant. That's going to be interference. Martavis Bryant had maybe a half a step on Likely and Likely knew he was in trouble and just latched on. Pass interference. Number four on the defense. By rule, the bottom call be spotted at the two-yard line. First out. Well, this is just a size mismatch. Likely in again because Dexter McDougal, their best corner, is out with a shoulder injury. Jeremiah Johnson is still out. That's Likely six, five at five, against five seven. seven. Yeah, and and that ball, you know, at first I thought maybe not catchable. I think Brian could have made a play on that ball. That's the right call. Looked like that ball was bobbled, and McDowell then got nailed by Bowers. And you know, one of the quotes this week from Dabo Sweeney is, "We're going to major in the minors. We're going to go back to all the ball handling things and everything." First, the snaps have not been great. That one was okay, but that was just a completely mishandle by Roderick McDowell. They have not cleaned up some of those little things that harmed them against Florida State and Boston College. 
So the line of scrimmage moves back to the five. Here's Taj Boyd. No, sir. He'll lose a yard. Good play from Abner Logan, the red shirt freshman who's starting in place of their leading tackler, L.A. Gorey. This Clemson offense, I know that the, the coaches from Clemson keep saying this is as good an offense as they had last year. It's not even close, and this is a important down and distance. I think, Boyd, you've got to think about this guy running and throwing type of option here, I think. Well, they're only 67th in the country in rushing. Pressure coming. What a stand by Maryland. Sean Davis and Cole Ferrand in that order got there and stuffed ties Boyd. They'll force another field goal try. This, it, they just look terrible. Uh, the, the running back went to the right. Boyd went to do a play fake to the left. This was a pass play that no one was blocked. Clemson cannot get out of their own way, and it feels like it's about the third week in a row that that's happened. Catanzaro, who was already hit from 31, will try from 29. Clemson has driven deep into Maryland territory twice in a row, come out with only field goals. It's 7-6 Terps. Seven six Maryland three thirty seven to go first quarter. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, Mike and Ed, we saw Clemson what four times last year, and already in this game, we're still in the first quarter. I'm seeing a sense of urgency and frustration from Dabo Sweeney that I didn't see all last year. He was irate with his defense when they came off after that last series, especially his safeties. He was saying we might as well not play safeties if you guys can't do your job. It seems that the frustration with the sloppy mistakes and the mental errors is continuing. And that'll get to coaches every time and certainly the way the safeties played that 71 yard touchdown pass was incorrect and they have looked very sloppy on offense either. We have seen it so many times Ed. you can move the ball through the air. But if as they're working uh, on Taj Boyd's knees as he took a couple of shots in that last series if you can't run inside the 10 yard line it's very difficult to score and, and they have been able to run up until the last couple of weeks but this flaw the, the, the unable to get any move in the middle of the line and Boyd has just been banged around and they're over there doing the stress test on one of his knees likely four yards deep to take an E here's Reese Davis. My Dr. Pepper 10 conference update in the ACC, Florida State. No hangover after beating Clemson. Jameis Winston already got him in the end zone once. He would do it again. Calvin Benjamin with the touchdown. Devontae Freeman's just added another. 21-0 halfway through the first. I think they're going to put it out of reach to avoid that Wolfpack comeback this time. Reese, people wouldn't be talking about Jameis Winston possibly for the Heisman Trophy unless Johnny Manziel had done it last year. Now you've got to say he's a legitimate candidate. I think Manziel's still in that conversation as well. I think so too. Rowe just throws this one away under pressure from Shaq Lawson. So here is Boyd on that last play as he goes down. Let's see if he reacts a little bit to his knee. Yeah, right away went and grabbed that left knee. So that's something we're going to have to track. And it looked it looked sloppy but I, I, it's so hard to explain there were so many guys wrong on that play so to say oh Taj Boyd he went the wrong way but the running back went one way the offensive line clearly didn't know who they were supposed to block so here you go again a guy who is essential to their run game and gets beat around a little bit doing that now as a gift you left me Reed. He's a good hard nosed inside runner takes it to the 29 yard line. Anthony and Shuey, the linebackers combined to make the stop. You know Boyd on that replay made that funny little shift with both legs and it looked like even his cleats may have gotten caught in the turf. It did. It looked like that double hop where yeah. maybe his left knee twisted a little bit. Seems to be walking around a little gingerly as well. The problem is even if it's not a significant injury if there's any swelling. If this offense for Maryland can burn a little clock, start to get stiff as well. And they will burn every second they possibly can. Row on the screen to Reed. Reed with room to run across the 40. 
And for Clemson on their sideline, Cole Stout, the backup quarterback, now warming up. And this changes the entire offense for Clemson. Stout can run a little bit, but he is nowhere near the runner that Taj Boyd is. So Clemson, without a dominant tailback, their offensive line struggling, maybe they're going to have to go to a sling it around the yard type of offense. He's certainly not going to threaten you with the option game. They'll have it just to make sure you defend it, but it's not the same without number 10 running it. Maryland first down at the 40. Two running backs in this set. Rowe completes it to Nigel King, who makes his ninth catch of the entire season. Watch You've got the... Jacobs with 13 catches, King with nine, and Awamba with nine. Look at the weight transfer into the face of pressure. Did you see the little hip turn? This is a very disciplined quarterback. He's got great confidence. And remember, with all of the first stringers down, Caleb Rowe was the second string quarterback. So all summer, all spring, all summer, all fall, he's been working with Nigel King, Albert Reed, the running back, Laverne Jacobs, who he threw the touchdown to. So these guys understand the timing that they're working with. Reed the tailback, first down at midfield. And Two guys on the left side of Maryland's line jump. Prior to snap, ball start. <laughs> Number 77 on the when, Whenever two Five guys yards. jump on the same okay. side of the line, it's because one of them leaned over and said, what's it on? And that guy told him the wrong number. <laughs> Every time. You hear 15 things and you get up to the line, you think, oh, no, what's the snap count? It's on one. No, it was on two. <laughs> Thanks. I'll never ask you again. <laughs> Check your source. Reed. Tonight on ESPN, sophomore Heisman hopefuls headline a Pac-12 clash with BCS implications. Brad Hundley and the number 12 Bruins in Eugene to take on Marcus Mariota and the undefeated number three Oregon Ducks. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels tonight at 7 o'clock. Hundley a lot like Taj Boyd. Just great skill, can really throw the ball, can run with it, but can be up and down. And Oregon, I think, may be one of the best secondaries in the country. So let's see what the turnover deal is tonight for UCLA. Rowe throws incomplete. Nigel King, a catchable ball. Couldn't come up with it. You know, Caleb Rowe almost looks like a baseball catcher. He's got that quick release right from his ear. No wind up, no nothing. We went out to practice yesterday. There was a stiff wind, fifth, stiff wind, 15 to 20 miles an hour, and they were throwing into the wind. And to see him throw a ball that could cut through it and still be accurate, that ball, though, was a touch behind the receiver who was running away from him. So maybe the wind, it is swirling down there, had a little impact. But you're right, Mike, this guy can really get it out quickly. The one thing they have asked Rowe is try not to do too much. Take what's in front of you. Don't look for the home run. There's a great catch, a pass. You just said the last one was behind him. Laverne Jacobs had to turn his body, put his hands behind him, and snatch it out of the air for 22. And Rowe, he has intermediate accuracy. This ball is off. You can see the spin of the ball, though. See how that, it wasn't a tight spiral. That was one thing I noticed is, is, the, is the tight spiral. It came off, so it goes outside. But Jacobs makes a wonderful catch. And that's one where you know your ribs are exposed. You know that the safety is about to hit you. Still making that catch for a first down is huge for the young receiver. Remember, the quarterback is missing his top two receivers, Stephon Diggs and Deion Long, both who broke their legs a week ago and are gone for the season. First quarter is over. They're on their feet in College Park because their turfs are on top of the Clemson Tigers, 7-6. CC's biggest game ever. Turnover to touchdown. Two turnovers and two touchdowns. Touchdown, Florida State. Intercepted. Boom! 51 points, the most by any opponent at Death Valley. Holes dominating Clemson. Obviously, the result of that game destroyed what Clemson had hoped for, which was a shot at a national championship. 
that is very unlikely to happen unless there are uh, several miracles out there. But right now, they are facing a fired up Maryland team that could knock them out of a BCS bowl game if they lose this one. And the goal of finishing in the top five, all of those things on the line here for Clemson. You lose this game, there is no chance you're going to break into a BCS Bowl. Caleb Rowe on first down, gives it off to Reed. Running room on the right side. Reed breaks two tackles inside the 10 first and goal, Maryland. Reed, six carries, 40 yards. He's the backup to the injured Brandon Ross. We saw this Clemson defense last year, and they were young and injured in the secondary, and they have had made so much improvement early in the year. This is starting to feel like last year on defense. That's Jaron Curse, a true freshman, just not able to make a tackle at safety. And you're starting middle linebacker Stephon Anthony can't make the tackle. This is starting to look bad for Clemson. It's not like Reed's 235. He's only a 205 pound kid. Rowe throws to the end zone. Incomplete. A lot of traffic in there. Looked like receivers were crossing. Two wide receivers and three or four DBs all within five yards. And he had Reed wide open in the flat. Looked clean to me that there was nobody working on Nigel King illegally. There's King working. Now that's really good coverage there by Robert Smith, the safety. Of course, Clemson without Bashad Breland here in the first half. Breland was suspended in the second half against Florida State for a targeting and was ejected, so had to set up the first half here. So little thin for Clemson. Reed in the eye will get the carry, and Clemson crowding the line of scrimmage, almost daring them to throw again. Beasley comes in from his right defensive end spot to make the tackle. He's one of the nation's leading sack masters with nine this year. And I think for Maryland, they're slowing down. They're doing something that they haven't done much this year is huddle and go slow. But I think you have to think seven if you're here for Maryland. There's You cannot expect uh, Clemson to play this poorly on offense, and especially with how depleted you are on defense for Maryland. So I think this is where you start thinking about what are you going to do in fourth if you don't make it. To the end zone, intercepted. Picked off by J. Ron Curse. And that was a bad throw by Caleb Rowe. He could not let that happen. And Curse is thinking Christmas comes early. Clemson with a big break. Will it give them momentum on offense? They're down by one. Right now, it's a shocker. Maryland by one over Clemson. After the interception in the end zone, the Tigers take over at the 25-yard line. Taj Boyd throws incomplete in and out of the hands of Stanton Seconder. And you can tell on the replay what happened on this one, Ed. Look at the eyes of the quarterback right here and the middle safety. Remember a moment ago we saw the middle safety for Clemson Travis Blanks make a bad read and a bad angle on the long throw that time the freshman J. Ron curses in there and that was Caleb Rowe telling the safety exactly where he was going to throw the ball. Another mistake. Wow. You had a drop pass a moment ago in the first play. Now you have it going the other way. And earlier in the game, we picked up after a run. Boy, this was before that blitz. He's already grabbing his left knee. And then on that third down play that just looked awful, he came up. They examined his knee. Janine Edwards reported that he took some aspirin on the sideline. Seems to be okay. Second and long, Watkins takes it out across the 35 to the 36-yard line where they'll spot it for a first down. 16-yard gain, fourth catch of the afternoon for Sammy Watkins. Watkins just catches it a little better than most guys. Oh. Somebody described it as just taking the ball, and that's what he does. Brooks trying to get outside, picks up about five. Good block by Tyler Shatley, who was a defensive lineman a couple of years ago, now starting a right guard as a graduate student. Clemson with his up-tempo offense, trying to get out of the hole. 
flanker screen Watkins Sammy Watkins a fascinating story because he grew up in a drug infested area in South Fort Myers his football idol a kid named Willie Fletcher was shot five times and killed in front of his house he wanted to come to Clemson because it was isolated he said it'd be tough to get in trouble up here you'd really have to do something well he got in trouble when he got back to Fort Myers in the offseason which caused a drug possession charge which caused his mom to move up here saying all right if we can't do it down there we're going to come to South Carolina they've moved the family here he's doing a lot better put some weight on his, his father and uh, siblings came up as well they've established himself in South Carolina Boyd underneath to Watkins when he catches the ball when I remember last year when we had Clemson and you had had Clemson at several times the year before yes. and you kept saying I, this guy's better than you think you have to see him in person it was just never there last year he catches the ball so effortlessly and when he takes off running he's just a half a step faster than everybody on the field it always feels like they've been doing the Associated Press All-American team for a lot of years as they give it to Brooks up the middle and Brooks dies for a first down at the 40. I don't know how many years they've been doing the Associated Press forever as long as there's been football and newspapers. He was only the fourth true freshman ever named first team all AP all American. And then you mentioned the off field drug arrest. He was suspended. He ended up with a stomach virus. Didn't play much. Lost some weight. Got out of shape. Really rededicated himself this offseason. Having a good one. Little end around flavor with Roderick McDowell. Ball may have come out. The officials no sign yet. McDowell got it back. Abner Logan hit him and may have jarred it loose late. It looked to me like McDowell was down. I, I, you know, we were just re looking at this. Let's see if McDowell is off the ground. It looks like he may. He's not down yet. Well, you would, I think you'd have to say forward progress. I think they should have reviewed that. Good however. point. Boy, down the middle of Watkins. Inside the 15-yard line. And you have to understand with Maryland, you can't play man-to-man. -man. Their top two corners are out with injuries. You've got to play some kind of a shell defense with two deep or three deep. Watch how Watkins, Watkins just that last minute takes one step towards the ball, catches it, and then gets back upfield. Such a good field. McDowell. And if I'm Maryland right now, Ed, I have seen Taj Boyd limp off the field a couple of times. When they go to that read option, I'm playing the running back. I'm saying, you want to keep it at your own risk, go ahead. Yeah, you're going to have to beat us. Well, let's go back to that fumble just for a moment, only because right there at the end of the play, well, here goes Clemson too fast. We'll go back to it. Boyd. And that ball was tipped and it saved a touchdown. Marcus Whitfield got a fingertip on it, it appeared. Nice job by Whitfield. But let's go back to that fumble. It was McDowell at the end of the play. See, he's on the defender. He's not down, but I think forward progress. I'm not sure that they would have overturned that. I think that they may, they, I think they should have reviewed it, but I think that ball would have stayed with Clemson. Another big third down for Clemson. In the red zone, they have been stopped twice, had to settle for field goals. And this is a bit, you'd love to run like a quarterback draw here. I'm just not sure you can with the injured quarterback. Underneath to McDowell. And McDowell swallowed up by a hustling Maryland defense. Alvin Hill was in on the tackle, and here comes the Clemson field goal unit again. Clemson just looks completely lost in the red zone. They've had struggles since Boston College two weeks ago, and I think the, the flaw in this offense, they have no running game outside of Taj Boyd. Last year they had Andre Ellington. This offensive line has not been able to get much push, but this is a, a real blight on, on this offense. They're just uh, really struggling inside the 15. Catanzaro already with a very busy day. He's kicked three, 25, 29, and 31 for Catanzaro. ESPN College Football.
Brought to you by the new Windows. Tweet your Saturday Superfan photos to College Game Day for a chance to win a trip to a bowl game. And Wells Fargo. When people talk, great things happen. It's homecoming, so they brought back some of the uh, all-time greats for Maryland. That is Randy White. His nickname in college was the Manster. They said he was half man, half monster. Trust me, I covered a lot of his <laughs> games. He was all monster. In 1974, a first-team All-American, ACC Player of the Year. He won both the Allen and Lombardi trophies. He was enshrined in both the college and pro football Hall of Fame in 1994. And there were points in his career during his prime when one man trying to block Randy White had no chance. And that was in the NFL, too. Little pooch kick taken by Clemson at the 33-yard line. I'm not sure if they were trying, or taken by Maryland, not sure if they were trying to a onside kick or not. Let's go to the studio for an update. All right, guys. Jameis Winston in the first quarter has thrown for 229 yards. We're going to update the stat you just saw right there. North Carolina State ended the Knowles are only lost last year. Rashad Green's going to catch that one. I think this one's in the barn about 10 seconds into the second quarter. 35 nothing. Reese, that's what these two teams have in common. They have both been pummeled by the Florida State Seminoles. That, that club is growing weekly. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Mike and Ed, uh, Maryland offensive line coach Tom Bratton was talking to his line, and they feel that they are getting some better push on the left side of their line. And because their right guard, number 76, Mike Dunn, came off the field limping badly, we'll look for them to try to move things to the left with this possession. All right, Janine, thanks very much. And they have switched tailbacks for this series. Jaquiel Vey was in for a second. Reed has just replaced him. Here's a flanker screen to Jacobs, and Jacobs will take it up at the 40. It'll be about three yards shy of a first down. One thing that surprises me, Ed, I know Maryland was going to huddle, try to take some time off the clock, but you can take another 10 seconds of play off the clock by letting the play clock wind down, and they have not done that. Well, you, you want to stay. In, there has to be some rhythm. You want to shrink the game, but you don't want to do it to a point where you're letting the clock dictate when you run a play. You get the call in. You do have to stay in some type of feel. I don't think like it's four corners basketball where you wait to the last second to snap. And here, not happy with the call, going to burn a timeout, which in a tight half, let's mark if that's going to matter as this clock runs out. They said they want to give up five yards facing a third and three. It would make it third and eight much more difficult for the way they run their offense. The nation's longest winning streak and BCS title hopes both on the line tonight on ABC Braxton Miller and the Ohio State Buckeyes play host to freshman sensation Christian Hackenberg and Penn State Saturday night football presented by Windows tonight at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC and I'm not so sure it's tonight but I, there's no way Ohio State in my opinion gets out of this season unbeaten I just don't think that they're good enough and of course as we take a look at the Discover card BCS standings last week went all topsy-turvy and Clemson really one of the luckier ones in the bunch. They didn't fall much and and you come in there at number nine. Maybe it's tough to get back to number two. But if this were 2014 and there were four teams. Yeah. Clemson would still be a big part of the conversation. But when you lose by the margin they did last week not dropping out of the top ten is a statement by the voters about how good the Clemson might be and Ricardo Young checks in to run their wild crab formation he's going to be short of a first down and uh, the, the very first fourth and short for Randy Edsel I think the way that uh, Clemson's offense and Taj Boyd has been playing even though that they are slim on defense I would be surprised if Edsel whose background is as a secondary coach would go for it here however mm -hmm. You take the measurement and you're sitting here at Maryland. You've got almost half of your defense hurt last week against Wake Forest. You finished the game without your top quarterback your top running back your top tight end your two best wide receivers. You've got it seven. You're down two. You've got a foot to go. You've been able to run the ball. I, I would be tempted here if I were Maryland to go for this. I think they'll he's, punt it and I, a I don't defensive coach. I, I, I'm not saying they shouldn't punt it. I'm just saying I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And of course Clemson leaving all of their defenders it's called the safe punt return unit 
that Dabo Sweeney has out there, meaning I'll leave my defensive front seven just in case yeah, you get a little right. squirrely. Renfro to kick to Humphreys. We approach the eight minute mark in the first half. Even if Maryland doesn't score the rest of this half, if they could hold Clemson to this score, they'd really have some momentum going in the locker room. Fair catch called for and made at the 18 yard line. 39 yard punt, no return. We've got a good one in College Park. Second quarter here in College Park. It's a two point ball game. This is not typical Clemson offense, is it? There's no way that if you tuned into this game at the start, you thought that Clemson against a very depleted Maryland defense would just run into mud in the red zone. They've gone the wrong way. They've mishandled snaps. Chad Morris on the right, the offensive coordinator for Dabo Sweeney on the left. These guys are getting frustrated with this. McDowell able to turn the corner. He'll pick up eight yards. A lot of good runs on first down in this offense. Eight, nine yard runs all day long so far. I mean, one thing about the spread hurry up is a lot of people think it's a throwing offense, but guys like Chad Morris, if you can get an inside run game, they'll do it all day long. McDowell bounces off a tackler and then is stacked up. He'll still be two yards shy. Good play by Matt Robinson. He looks like he's healthy coming back from a shoulder injury. Just absolutely zero pen uh, uh, or movement. It, it was almost like the offensive line was pass blocking there. Their shoulders came up. There was no drive by Ryan Norton and Kalon Davis, the left guard. Just no push. Boyd short set goes to Watkins. What a catch. Sammy Watkins runs over a tackler. And out to the 47 yard line. He just pasted Zach Dansell. The term is he doesn't catch it. He takes it from the air. He, he is so gifted. And when you catch the ball that far away from your body and Dansell unfortunately gets posterized a little bit there. But it's just unreal. The adjustment in the air and, and to yards after catch are so important if you have that many catches with the ball in the air away from your body it just makes you so much better runner after the catch no doubt he is something truly special Brooks sidesteps the first man and crosses midfield in the Maryland territory this has not been the area where Clemson's had a problem they've been able to move it up and down the field once they get inside the 20 the 15 the 10 that's when the problems have arisen as look at the umpire over the ball because there was a change of personnel for Clemson so one of the strategies that Maryland is employing is then we'll substitute at least one player and the umpire gives the defense the opportunity to make that change a really good ploy completely legal good strategy by Maryland Brooks has the first down lost his shoe first I thought it was the ball and the ball may have come out and Brooks is hurt Rolling on the field, running back, knee was on the ground. And that's Cole First Ferrand down. making the tackle. He has a cast on his hand. He has a broken knuckle. You can see the right arm has a hard time wrapping up. There comes the shoe. Ball. Ooh, I think that ball was moving before he was down and landed awkwardly on his elbow or shoulder. Let's see if that ball shifts. I think that ball shifted. I, I think if we look at the backside and if Maryland recovered this ball before it went out of bounds. There's the shoe throw. He's still up. Oh, he, he crumpled his, his left hand or arm when he went to put his hand on the ground. But uh, it looked like he did have the ball before he hit the ground. Back to the air. Watkins again. This time to the 25, Sean Davis was there. He, it's really fascinating to watch how good Sammy, look how far away from his body his hands are when he catches that. Good coverage. He's just too special. McDowell. 
And right now, they're starting to control that forward wall a little bit better. I, you know, I was just thinking for Maryland, this sounds crazy. I almost feel like you need a timeout. Doesn't it feel like it in does. basketball, really? like your, your defense is starting to get a little tired, a lot of hands on the hips. I know you're trying to do the substitution thing, and you, you try to save some of those timeouts, but it feels a little bit like basketball. Boyd, they got him from behind, and Walkway came on a blitz and takes down Taj Boyd. They get inside the 20, and Clemson forgets how to play offense. How great did they look until they got inside yep. the red zone there, and all of a sudden, Sammy Watkins was open for a second. It was a one-man route. Boyd pulled it down, and they get the set. They are looking at the shoulder of Zach Brooks, by the way. And now another big third down, and again, deep in Maryland territory. Blitz coming. Boyd in trouble. Throws it away at the last minute. I think he was down, Sean Petty. And now a flag. It's either going to be a sack or intentional grounding. Intentional grounding on the offense. The penalty is spotted the foul. Loss of down. Fourth down. You have to be outside the tackle box, and you have to get the ball to the line of scrimmage. And, and the, definitely outside of the tackle. And the ball can it, it, the ball can go beyond the line of scrimmage once it goes out of bounds. But this ball clearly thrown almost directly laterally, so you end up getting the sack. And what a huge play! Not throwing that ball away, you gave up almost 10 yards. So Catanzaro goes from what was a little bit of a chip shot now to a longer field goal. It is the toughest penalty in football. You lose the yards and you lose the down. Seconds. It's exactly like taking a sack, which is what you don't do if you're a senior quarterback, third year as a starter. Uh, I'll tell you, Clemson in the red zone has just looked horrendous today. Here's Reese Davis. Mike, time for an innovative look brought to you by AT&T. As soon as we're done here, we'll take you out to Audson for Oregon and UCLA. Now, you know how well Stanford stayed disciplined last year to stop Marcus Mariota, who's averaging more than 10 yards per carry. Maybe Jordan Zumwalt and Eric Kendricks take a page out of the Shane Scove book and try to slow down the Duck quarterback tonight. Clemson, I think, trying to make up its mind. You want to go for the long field goal? You want to punt? You want to go for it? They wow. had three legitimate options, and they took the one I didn't think they would, and that's punt. Well, it, it really, the wind has shifted. It is directly into the face of Clemson, so that's too long of a field goal. I, I like this decision. I think for Clemson, they're, they're worried this thing's going to get really sidetracked. And the ball was touched at about the seven yard line. So Maryland will take over from there with 359 to go in a stunning first half. The Turks and Clemson in a good one. Visit watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Welcome back to College Park. 3.59 to go first half. Maryland takes over at its own eight. Down two points to the number nine Clemson Tigers. Reed belted by Beasley before he could take a step. This looks almost identical to that Jadavian Clowney yes. tackle in the bowl game, and it was the same thing for Clowney. Completely unblocked goes Vic Beasley. Good technique. His head was up, and let's watch this real time. Did you, oh, did you not? <laughs> did you notice how Beasley had his face mask up when he made that hit? That's that's the safety thing. You can still make really good, hard, clean hits. If you keep your head up and your face mask up, nobody gets hurt. Clemson just lost its middle linebacker, Stephon Anthony, limped off. And Reed is taken down by the new middle linebacker, Spencer Shuey, Spencer Shuey who shared time at that spot a year ago with Anthony. And now, you know, for Clemson, last year they had the disastrous injury bug in their secondary like Maryland has this year. But Shuey, a guy who if he has to move over to the middle, you start losing some depth at that linebacker position. And this is a defense that was pretty shaky. Played better towards the back half of last year, but really played poorly. And, and by the definition of their own defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, played timid last week against Florida State.
Caleb Rowe, the backup quarterback, stands at his two waiting for the snap. And they'll blow it dead. Delay of games on the offense. Mm. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. They're trying to squeeze every possible second out of that play clock. Well, the problem now is if you don't pick up any yardage, you're going to be doing the short punt snap. A punt snap's usually 15 yards long. So if you don't complete something here or move it out, and if I'm Randy Edsel, I'm not sure I want my quarterback who's only already thrown an interception throwing the ball here. So you at least want to get some spread for your punter to get a full snap length so the rush is not right in his face. Well, we'll throw out of his end zone and throws complete up to the 16-yard line. A perfect strike, but they may be... Well, it depends on the on the spot. If it's the 16, they do not have the first down. Second time out, first down. Fourth down, fourth down and two. This was so close. Laverne Jacobs, if he can make one more move, this is a first down. What a really nice tackle there. You saw the head up by J. Ron Kirst, the safety, the true freshman safety. Big guy, 6'4", almost 200 pounds. Did a really nice job with his head up and made a nice tackle so that the receiver couldn't get the first down yardage. Here's an update from Reese Davis. Reese, what do you have? Mike had the Lexus halftime report coming up. Alabama's rolling. They've scored every time they've touched it and going for more against Tennessee. Miami got a scare and some brilliant quarterback performances. First from Johnny Manziel and right now from Jameis Winston, who has his team on the move. He's already put 35 points on the board, trying to put even more up against North Carolina State. Mark and Lou are here. We'll look ahead to UCLA and Oregon. All of that coming up on the Lexus halftime report. All right, Reese, we'll look forward to that. Maryland will have to kick it away. Renfro to kick to Adam Humphreys. The wind has died down. What little there is is at his back. Got a little pressure on him. Short kick. They're going to have to let it go. Takes a Maryland bounce. And still rolling down to the Clemson 42-yard line. 153 to go first half from College Park, Maryland. It is a two-point game. Clemson and the Terps. Clemson will start with great field position at its own 42. Their problems have not been until they reach the Maryland red zone. And then this monstrously good offense has been held to three field goals. First down, 10 yards to go. Got pushed out of field goal range because of a intentional grounding on the last one by Taj Boyd. Boyd throws for Humphreys, knocked out of bounds. 23 straight plays since Taj Boyd has had a either a called running play or an option read running play, and I think it's because of the knee. Left knee, it looked like he tweaked it earlier in the game, then he got sacked down inside the red zone, came up Gimpy. They did the stress test. He put a sleeve on it, so I think that's the whole point. Blitz coming. McDowell runs right into it. And it'll be third and long as Yannick Ngakwe made his second tackle of the ball game. Brian Stewart, the second year defensive coordinator for Maryland, dialing, dialing up a line stunt that time. Ngakwe came down inside from his defensive end position, was unblocked. Blitz coming. They pick it up, and boy, throws Watkins. And lost his footing and went down outside the 25, and that could have been a touchdown. He is just so explosive. Look how quickly he catches and turns to run with this ball. Watch how fastly the ball is caught. He's already turning to run. He's already looking at people. He's got such great vision, and Sean Davis just not able to get his cleats in the ground to make the tackle. Ten catches, 127 yards in the first half for Watkins. McDowell, big hole. Then just tripped up saving tackle by Alex Twine you know it, it just and, got him and the hard part you say well why why don't you double team Watkins why don't you go up and press him well the problem is they move him around so much that he's almost impossible to find And Brian Stewart because he's shorthanded in the secondary just doesn't have enough bodies for him. Boyd underneath Humphreys with great speed can't get away 
You know, you could do that, Ed, if you had a bunch of seniors, guys who had played a long time, they'd be able to adjust on the fly to where he was. But you have so many young guys, you can't expect them to pick that stuff up. Well, we were watching the Florida State game on coaches' film, which gives you a little better view, gives you the entire field view as the referee is going to measure. But we were talking to Brian Stewart, the defensive coordinator, yesterday. They didn't even watch the Florida State film because Florida State is so deep and has so many athletes. They have the ability to line up and play man coverage on almost every play, which is if you have the athletes to do that, what you would want to do against this type of offense. But for Maryland, and they may, I think Randy Etzel is building a really good program. He is. But because of the injuries and because it's the only third year in the system for this coaching staff, not quite able to do that yet. And. The goal has been to make Clemson earn it. Don't let them throw anything over the top. And I think Maryland's done a fantastic job with that. And here now Clemson in the place where they've struggled the entire game. 29 seconds on the first half clock. Clemson has one timeout at its disposal. Boyd with Tom sidearms it for the end zone. And a beautiful defensive play by William Likely. Boy, is that good for a true? That's good for anybody, but he's a true freshman. And they're going to get likely on the flag, and I just didn't see this unless I missed it. Prior to the pass, holding number four oh. on the defense. Got it. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Because the play made on the no. ball was not interference. Yeah, he's going one on one against Adam Humphrey, so this had to happen earlier in the route. Watch top of your screen. No, that's you, uh, you don't call that. In college football, the defender is allowed to put his hands on the receiver as long as the ball is not in the air. That was not holding. This is a bad call. That was great defense by Likely. Gives a first down and inside the 10. McDowell again inside the five and pushed back. The clock will stop with 14 seconds left. Clemson luckily with these timeouts, so you're able to run the ball. You wouldn't run the ball normally with this much time running off the clock but because they had that timeout now at second and goal you get about six seconds per play so you can run second and third but those I think have to be throws into the end zone and of course you can run it but you better make it well I don't think you'd run it until fourth. I, there, if you run it on second or third and goal without a timeout and 14 seconds left yeah. the, the half's going to end so I think these all have to be throws into the end zone before you uh, try a field goal and if you get a pass interference in the end zone get a first and goal in the two you maybe you'll get an extra play out of that 14 seconds left Clemson has used its last timeout Maryland has stopped the Tigers three times in this situation during this game and forced Catanzaro to come on and try three chip shot field goals he's made them all but you don't think of Clemson as rely <laughs> as good as Cat Zaro is, you don't think, well, we're going to get What is this, 1981? That's we're right. going to kick a bunch of field goals yeah. over Clemson? No, you this don't is think of them that way. No. Boy. Touchdown. Jordan Leggett. A backup tight end. As Boyd faked like he was going to run, got some space, and Leggett for the touchdown. Perfect throw. Nice play fake, too. There was an, a run fake on that, and Leggett got out late. And Leggett, a guy who buried on the depth chart, not even listed as as high as third string this week on the depth chart and tight end position something Clemson's been trying to get a little more out of. It's a huge play with nine seconds to go in the half. And this was the guy that Brian Stewart when we met with him yesterday said he was so afraid of in the passing game because they hide behind that offensive line and a tiny little pick but that was a not illegal pick that was a really nice run route by Humphreys as he works to the inside and then the linebacker excuse me the safety number 32 Jarrett Ross could not get over there to make the play and uh, that was the position that Brian Stewart the defense coordinator for Maryland was worried about that guy that, that could hide right there in that guard tackle gap and get lost only his sixth grab of the entire season his second touchdown has gotten most of his playing time during blowouts. 
You know, Randy Etzel was hoping they could make one more defensive stand, force another field goal, and even though he'd have been behind, he would have had the momentum going into the locker room. But Dan Sell, who was the safety on that coverage, still had pretty good coverage. It took a good route by Humphreys to knock him off his route. Check in with Janine. Well, guys, that last play had to have helped Taj Boyd's psyche because he was telling me before the game the last couple of weeks have not been fun for him, believe it or not. He said it's felt like a job. We haven't been enjoying ourselves. There's been a lot of pressure on him. So definitely that play had to have helped. And one thing Chad Morris asked his offense to do this week especially was to help Taj Boyd, help their leader when he's struggling. And so far today, I haven't seen anybody do that. You know, what's amazing, Janine, is that confidence is such a fleeting thing. You have a guy who's the, the school record holder. He's fourth all-time in the ACC, second all-time to only Phillip Rivers in the ACC in total offense. As Maryland goes for a bomb and it's going to be a, a pass interference call. But you wouldn't think he would ever have a problem with confidence. But you make a couple of bad throws, something goes wrong. It's easy to lose. Start going the other way. And Maryland trying to get a little confidence. I like the fact. Pass interference. Number 14 on the defense. 15 yards previous block. That's Mar automatic. First that's down. Martin Jenkins. And remember in the NFL. This would be a spot foul. This ball would be on the 20 yard yeah. line for Maryland. But Clemson lucky that at this level it's a 15 yard penalty with Pashad Breland out. Martin Jenkins who is just banged up. He's got a shoulder that won't stay in. He's got a broken thumb just banged up and he has no choice but to uh, pass interfere here. I, I love this call by Mike Loxley the offensive coordinator going for Amba Etatawa who has great speed. Four races left. The chase for the Sprint Cup hits a home stretch. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson lead the chase field into Martinsville, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. So if you're Randy Etzel right now, you got a choice. Try to throw the ball deep to the end zone. The other choice, maybe try to throw a screen and get a bunch of guys in front. I think you, you I think you let it go. I think you move the pocket. Caleb Rowe. As a matter of fact, Roe and I were talking on Thursday in practice. We were talking about how Johnny Manziel has the ability to lob it up to Mike Evans, and they just have that timing. Now, remember, Nigel King is a 6'3 receiver that he's worked a ton with. They do have some other height out there. Etatawa is six foot one, so I think you roll to the right here, and let's see if you can't lob one up to the 6'3 King. Barring a penalty, this will be the last play of the half and Clemson has its safeties back at the 15. And intercepted at the one yard line. Picked off by Robert Smith. The free safety who grabbed it at the one. So Clemson turns back Maryland after they take a 16-7 lead over the Terps. And here's Janine. Well, Coach, that last series you scored, that had to have helped. But why have you guys struggled so much, especially in the red zone today? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what we got to go in here and get figured out. But we, we really moved the ball well offensively. Really proud to have a run in the football. We're throwing and catching the ball well. We've just, we've kind of, our goal line run has not been what we needed to. We've kind of got behind down there, but, and we missed a couple plays, had a touchdown, and ball got tipped by the tackle. But, you know, hey, they're playing hard. They're, they're hanging in there. Big drive right there. We've scored, I think, every time except once. So, you know, good, tough football game this first half. Your motto this week to your team was bounce back. What are you going to say to your guys in there right now? Well, we've got 30 more minutes. we got 30 more minutes to go play uh, the best football we can. That's simple as that. Let's go make a few uh, corrections, a few adjustments, and, and try to put, keep, keep this thing rolling. Defense is settling in. Offense is moving the ball. Thanks, Dabo. At the half, our score is Clemson 16, Maryland 7. That's the story from College Park. Now we send you to Reese Davis. He has the Lexus halftime report. 10 3 is the score. Football! 12 legged caught. Clemson with a 16 7 lead on Maryland. Second half not far away from College Park.
Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. We're at halftime at Maryland where the Clemson Tigers are leading the Maryland Terrapins 16 to 7. This is a question I probably couldn't have asked you legitimately before the game started, but I can legitimately ask you now. Can Maryland win this game? Can they upset Clemson? Absolutely. Will they is a different question, though. But I, you're right. Coming in with as many people as Maryland is missing on offense, or starting quarterback, starting running back, two top receivers, top tight end, there's no way in the world anyone would have thought that what could happen. The way that they can win this game, though, Taj Boyd has been terrible handling the ball inside the red zone. Yep. Boyd turns it over a couple of times, and we've already seen Caleb Rowe has some weapons down the field, the backup quarterback for Maryland. So a couple of turnovers for Maryland. Yeah, I think Maryland can win this game. And certainly Taj Boyd's knee could be an issue here in the second half. He the Terps will, Terps will have to kick to Clemson. And he now wearing a black brace. He had a white sleeve on it earlier. He heard it early in the game. And then we picked up on it when there was a blitz that went un, unblocked in the red zone. And he was sacked and came up grabbing that left leg. Watkins from the four. Can't get outside. Tripped up at the 16-yard line. Now it's time for our Discover Card Game Changer brought to you by Discover Card. No shock that it is Sammy Watkins, but what is so fun to watch is how he takes the ball out of the air. Wasn't that what the scout yes. said? He doesn't catch it. He takes it out of the air. And Sammy Watkins, who had a tough year last year with some off the field problems and some injuries and stomach virus, seems to be his old self again. McDowell, he had a good first half. Picks up a couple of yards here. One of the Maryland players lost his helmet. He'll have to go out for a play. That'll get Andre Monroe in for Darius Kilgo. Since we speculated about Taj Boyd's knee injury, he has not run the ball on that option read. He's not had any quarterback draws. They are obviously being much more careful with him. Here comes a blitz, and he throws high. He intended for Roderick McDowell, and I'm not sure if that ball had been right at him. McDowell could have caught it because this is the equivalent of a baseball sunfield on that sideline. Well, this ball just gets away from Taj Boyd. He's stepping. It's the left knee that he has the sleeve on. And just bad technique fell away from it and that ball had no chance and I think McDowell may be fighting for the first down yardage if he just leads him a touch. Now third and seven they go with four wide receivers in an empty backfield. Maryland comes with a four man rush. Passes underneath caught by McDowell but he will not get the first down. Alex Twine the outside linebacker. Had his back to those sticks, and if you stay inside the yard markers and make the guy catch it there, he can't get the first down. Alex Twine, a guy who's just getting back from a shoulder injury, he and Matt Robinson coming back at outside linebacker for this game, and uh, Brian Stewart, the defensive coordinator, thought that would be a big deal. It helped them cover in the flats, and that's exactly what Twine did there. Great start for Maryland in the second half. Pinion with a short kick, and it takes a Maryland bounce. And the Turks will have great field position after a punt of only 30 yards as we check in with Janine Edwards. Well, guys, when I asked Randy Edsel how he felt about the way his backups are playing with all the injuries that he's had on his team, he looked at me very stoically and matter-of-factly and said, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Aren't they supposed to do that? After all the injuries they went through last season, he said, if we were not mentally tough by now, we never will be. He is thrilled with how hard his guys are competing. You know, Janine, I don't know that there is anyone that I have ever talked to that takes the philosophy to heart that you can't worry about the things you can't control. Full star. Number three on the offense. Five yards, first down. Five yards on a false start. 
he says yeah we got all these guys hurt but the next guy plays and he's got to do this job and he's got to do that job he makes little adjustments based on maybe what they can or can't do but it's like there's no sense whining about it this is what it is Randy Edsel took a year with Tom Coughlin back in the early 90s and built an NFL franchise the Jacksonville Jaguars they didn't coach for an entire year he said I really learned what it meant to build a team not just a team that can win occasionally but can then weather the storms of seasons like that last year and this year and they really have a little swing out there was complicated by a great play by Quandon Christian who just got in the middle of it and made Caleb Rowe throw the ball over his head to avoid a pick. But you were talking about, you know, getting the next guy to play. And Caleb Rowe was one of four quarterbacks last year for that Maryland lost for the season with a lower body injury. And it was unbelievable that a couple of weeks before that happened, they, uh, Randy Edsel went to his offensive coordinator. Mike Loxley said, well, who else on the roster played quarterback in high school? And they actually started prepping a uh, linebacker. And Atawa can't come up with it. That was a beautifully thrown ball. Looked like he had his hands on it, but Martin Jenkins was there in coverage. And they ended up the last four games playing a linebacker at quarterback. And somehow they had a little bit of an offense. Now you got to make that play. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not easy, but that's where the ball is supposed to be when the Defensive back Jenkins has his back turned, throw it a little behind him, and you've, you've got to eventually you expect a guy like Atatawa, who's just a freshman. He's been getting a lot of time, but with Diggs and Long down, he's got to step up. Keep in mind their top two receivers are out with broken legs, both hurt a week ago. Two of five skill players who are out. This to an open Laverne Jacobs the crowd wanted a flag they're not going to get it Corin Wiggins was back on coverage and if that ball is thrown two yards further it's a touchdown on the offense number 77 that penalty's declined fourth down and to make it worse mm. Mike Medeiros is called for offensive holding just under thrown Jacobs can really run can he? he had that long catch earlier Wiggins played it really well that, that's a good no call and and Wiggins a guy a true freshman who's starting to get some time for Clemson now this would have come back because of the holding call but Wiggins a guy who's working his way into the rotation in the secondary for Clemson coaches really like his ability to make a play on the ball and that time didn't panic continued on his route and that was not pass interference good play by a true freshman run to punt Humphreys waits inside his 20. Nice high floater. Fair catch made it to 20 yard line. They'll start from there with 13 16 to go, third quarter. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. 16-7, the Clemson Tigers with the lead. Clemson has the ball back. They start from their own 20. Flanker screen, Watkins. Fights for yardage, lost the ball, and Maryland has it. Watkins fighting for that extra yardage, had it stripped by Darius Kilgo. Or at least Kilgo got the recovery. Watkins may have lost it on his own. Yeah, I think that might have been Matt Robinson fighting to the end. Sammy Watkins starting to show a little bit of power trying to run after the catch. That is clearly the fumble. The knee was not down. I think you're going to give that one to Matt Robinson. Remember Robinson just back. Yeah, what a nice job. Got his left hand in here. And this is something that Maryland has not been able to do to cause turnovers. And how did we say they could win this game? <laughs> By causing turnovers. turnovers. They are going to take a look at this. This looked clearly to me like the ball was coming loose before oh, Watkins yeah. went down. How about that? Mm. Well, people were questioning all week. What would Clemson's psyche be like coming out that beating against Florida State? And what would Maryland be like after losing all those guys in the loss to Wake Forest? I think we have our answer. 
because this has just been a slop fest for Clemson inside the 20 they have been horrendous they have not scored a touchdown every possession they've had until this one has gone inside the 20 and they've not scored a touchdown until that tight end throw at the end of the half and now Sammy Watkins who has been playing brilliantly does not tuck the ball away properly and Matt Robinson just back from a groin injury ball is out so they will uphold this call or confirm the call actually on the field but this is unbelievable and you know this has got to be driving Chad Morris right out of his mind I mean Morris. he's used to scoring point points in, you know 40 50 60 and for Chad Morris this has been so frustrating the last after further review ruling on the field's confirmed first down Maryland for Chad Morris this is an offense that struggled against Boston College a game that Clemson had to fight for in the fourth quarter and Randy Edsel told us yesterday we feel like if we're in this game we can affect the psyche of Clemson and the fumbles and, and miscues in the last couple of ball games have just been terrible for Clemson and they get bitten again. Of course, Florida State was a big part of those negative stats. And they doomed themselves early in that game with turnovers. Reed nowhere to go. Thought he saw a little seam dance to his left and got drilled. And offensively for Maryland, they usually go hurry up. Mike Loxley, who had that disastrous turn as the head coach at New Mexico, but came back. He is from this area. He's been the offensive coordinator now for three years under Randy Edsel. They don't quite have the run game that they had with the starter C.J. Brown, but one thing they will do with Rowe is move him away from the pocket. He's a little better athlete than you think. And I'm not sure you want him just standing in there, especially with the way Vic Beasley can run the passer over your left tackle. And taking their time has really been a great idea. And this pass underthrown, all tipped, almost intercepted after the tip. Crowd wanted a interference call against Gallo but after Wiggins tipped it all bets are off good read that time by Wiggins the coaches from Clemson told us this Wiggins this young defensive back has a really good feel he was the one who uh, broke up the long pass that was intended for Laverne Jacobs just the series before and that time time was jumped perfectly to break up the screen. Caleb Rowe has had two picks and only hit two complete passes since the first quarter. This is the play of the game so far. Third and seven. Rowe floats it to the near sideline. Back shoulder throw incomplete. We check in with Janine. Well, Mike, the Maryland kicker Brad Craddock's personal kicking coach is the NFL's fifth leading scorer, former Raven Matt Stover. And the four things that Craddock learned from Stover, visualize the perfect kick. Keep your hips back. Keep your chest open. Make sure your head is steady. Let's watch. He's trying from 41 yards. 13 out of 16 this year. This would make it a one score game. And it does. With plenty to spare. And the young man all the way from Adelaide, Australia. His parents are here on a walkabout. It is their last weekend that they get to watch this young man kick this season. Because they have to go home. And I would say that Coach Stover, look at that head. Perfectly still, good follow through. And they're within a touchdown here in Maryland. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Ford Service. Get the right tire at the right price during the big tire event running now. And the pre-LED bowl, the biggest thing since the light bowl. It was Robotics Day at Maryland yesterday. That's the first robotics team from South River High School in Edgewater, Maryland. High schools as well as Maryland engineering students demonstrated their work in the field of robotics. A basketball shooting robot. It looked like a basketball passing robot to me. I didn't see a goal. Don't we have enough guys who can already <laughs> shoot basketballs? Every team needs a good pass. <laughs> Maryland has pulled within one score, 16 to 10. Watkins. 
taken down at 23. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.2 million in scholarship funds. Well, we have not seen a Taj Boyd run since the first quarter when right. he was injured. And this is a big part of this offense is the run game of the quarterback, and they have not had it at all. Under center here gives to McDowell, and he lost the ball again. Maryland's got it. T.J. Burrell drilled him and knocked it loose. Are you kidding? Well, we said, how can Maryland win this game? Yes, sir. A couple of turnovers. This looks to me like McDowell. There's no way this ball should come out. There's just no way. I, you know, a pretty good hit by Goins. And Whitfield's on the ball there, but that's that's inexcusable. In traffic, there's no way that your running back should be fumbling there. Back-to-back -back fumbles for Clemson. Reed, a little misdirection play inside the 25 to the 23. One thing Dabo Sweeney talked about during the week that was after Florida State was let's major in the minors. Ball handling, how do we put the ball away? Well, so far in the minors today, Dabo's team's getting about a D minus. We've seen bad snaps. We've seen guys go the wrong way on plays. We've seen offensive linemen completely miss assignments. They're uh, they're not doing so well in the minors. The the little things that they went back to work on this week. Blitz coming, and the pass is overthrown. Threw that one into double coverage. Really, Caleb Rowe didn't have much of a chance to read anything. And this is, you know, Mike Loxley yesterday, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, when we were talking to him about Caleb Rowe. Big game for Whitfield, the senior, so far. But he said, you know, he will throw it into traffic. And there was a blitz that time that, that was completely unblocked. And Rowe, I think, is Loxley there in the middle. I think Rowe should have pulled that down and tried to throw that away. That was a forced throw. If you get two breaks like this, at this part of the field, at this part of the game, you've got to make the other team pay. Maryland facing the third down here, roll over the middle, incomplete. Had receivers crossing and threw it between them. The crowd wanted a holding call, I believe, as one receiver tried to cut to the middle over some contact. But they're going to have to go for the field goal again. And that's Breland just back from his first half suspension from last week's ejection on a targeting call against Florida State. And the crowd wanted pass interference. How do you not call that? I, I know that ball was thrown low and away, but the Maryland receiver was cutting into the middle. This was a, that was a miss. Rashad Breland interfered with the pass receiver there, in my opinion. Craddock will try to make his second 41-yard field goal in consecutive possessions. And he got it. A nice little draw to put it through the middle. So back-to-back -back fumbles and six points for Maryland, but you got to think Clemson actually came out a winner by holding them to field goals. That's what you want if you have a quick change on defense and holding him to three. But I, I, Randy Etzel was really upset that that pass interference call was not made. And this crowd saw it. They saw it on the replay. And I think as we slow it down, I just don't know how you don't call that. That the receiver Nigel King is cutting towards the ball. You have to call that obvious contact before the ball got there. You and you say is the ball catchable? Yeah, he would have had to dive and get his hands underneath of it, but he gets the right to do that. That was a missed call. Now it's 16 13 and if you're on the Clemson sideline, you got to be thinking to yourself what what can happen next? going on here and that's the psyche of this team. And Randy Edsel said, you, you go back to 2011 when Clemson was 8-0 and then they had that awful slide at the end of the year. They looked like they didn't know where they were. They improved last year, of course, had a great win in the Chick-fil-A Bowl against a really good LSU team. But this team now starting to look like the team from 2011 to me. Bryant and Watkins are deep. Good kick this time and a kick out of the end zone. 
And Clemson will have to start from deep in its own territory. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, Mike, the question that Dabo Sweeney asked his team on Monday was, how are we going to handle this defeat to Florida State Saturday night? Are we going to hit the ground and crack like an egg? Are we going to hit the ground like an apple and bruise on the inside, but maybe nobody sees it? Or are we going to hit the ground like a ball and bounce? So every Clemson player got one of these balls on Monday. Bounce back. That's the motto. Well, they're going to have to bounce, Janine, because they have a problem right now. Maryland has certainly has the advantage and the momentum. They've closed within three. Clemson will go hurry up. This will be second and about two. McDowell. And he's got the first down. And because of that knee, a huge part of Clemson's offense, the running of Taj Boyd, has been taken away from them. It's something they, they run inside lead plays where a fullback or a tight end leads the quarterback. They run toss sweeps where they pull both guards and get them out in front of Taj Boyd, and they have none of that. Boyd short set throws to Watkins. Boyd, anytime you can get it to Sammy Watkins, it's a good idea. Earlier in the first quarter, Taj Boyd on an outside run here. Here's one of those quarterback runs. Grabbed his knee after that play, and this was just a horrendous play where couldn't tell what happened, but certainly no one was blocked, and Taj Boyd got his left knee checked out, and he hasn't had a running play since. Boyd straight back, sidearms it out to Watkins. His hands just envelop the ball. I mean, some guys have such hard hands, good receivers, you can hear the ball thud when it hits them. Not Sammy Watkins, there's no sound at all. And this time, Maryland having to play so far off because of Leggett, the tight end running off. You had to defend the long throw there. They'll go back to the same play with a different receiver. They get it to Humphreys. I, I think Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, is tired of calling inside run plays. Yeah. I think he's tired of not having a, his quarterback be able to run. So everything now starting to be the quick throw game to the outside. And when Boyd gets going and gets in a rhythm, he can be awfully accurate with these short and intermediate throws. Humphreys again. You run it until somebody stops it, don't you? And and that's the thing for Brian Stewart. If you're the defensive coordinator, you would love to come up and play press. You would love to come up and play man. But for Maryland, they're down their two best cornerbacks in Dexter McDougal and Jeremiah Johnson. They're down a starting safety in Anthony Nixon. And for Stewart, he said, I can't. I have to play coverage. We're going to make them earn it. Still trying to do that here. Taj Boyd sees it's covered up this time and gives it to McDougal. He gets a, he'll get a couple. And, and the read part of the zone read is just gone. Taj Boyd, there is no threat that Boyd is going to keep the ball. So Maryland can really key on that inside run. Maybe the thing is, for the surprise, let Boyd run it once. Cooper goes in motion. Boyd trying to roll. And he is taken down at the 18-yard line. Spun down by Marcus Whitfield. He didn't look too quick on that run to me. No, he, Taj Boyd, to my eye, looks injured let's watch as he rolls to his left here he's just there's no he doesn't have the full gate he's he's running on an injured left leg there's no two ways about that good coverage by Maryland but that's not the normal Taj boy one huge third down after another in this game third and nine Clemson in the red zone again where they have struggled all day long and three points only gets you up a touchdown here so I think you've got to be thinking Clemson somewhere near first down maybe you go for it Boyd under pressure, got away from the first man. Trying to run, he's got it, and Taj Boyd takes a hit low inside the 10. Hope he's all right. Maryland got a little bit of pressure. It looked like they were going to have Boyd sacked again. I think Clemson would have stayed in field goal range that time. But Andre Monroe just missed the sack, and you can see Boyd not as quick as normal, but just quick enough to pick up the first. That was a scary hit. McDowell picking his way to about the five. 
And this is where, if you miss the first half, Clemson was able to move the ball all they wanted until they got inside the 20. Well, this has been the struggle both against go back to the Boston College game, Florida State game, and even the first half of this game. Only one touchdown in the first half once they got inside the 20. And uh, it's because the quarterback run game, because that injury, just not a part of the plan right now. Second and goal. Watkins all the way to the near side. McDowell on the carry. No, he'll actually lose yardage back to the eight. And it was interesting, Taj Boyd, as soon as he saw the contact, turned around and looked toward the sideline. And this is not a zone read. There, nobody from Maryland believes that number 10 is going to keep this ball. So look at everyone on that side collapsing down to get the running back. And the offensive line for Clemson can get no push in the middle. It's been a problem. Third and goal. Time and out. Clemson's going to take a timeout. First time out of the second half. 30 seconds. They want to find a play that works right here on third and goal. And the only thing that's worked down here has been a pass play. I, I think you go with that misdirection. You use one of those sneaky fullbacks that lines up right behind the guard. But if you're going to play a 3-4 defense like Maryland does, your nose guard has to really set the point. This is Darius Kilgo. And I was talking about push at the line of scrimmage. He completely splits the double team between the right guard, Tyler Shatney, and the left and the center, Ryan Norton. So without the quarterback holding the edge and the nose guard not just beating but dividing that double team, there's just nowhere to run for Clemson. And if you play that 3-4, you have to have three down linemen who can stand up make the offensive lineman not get downfield then you have to have linebackers to close and fill the gaps and you were talking about the type of play here on third down you know we have not seen Sammy Watkins used a lot here if you can get some type of speed crossing route and get somebody behind it with number two that might be something you're looking at top of the screen right here blitz coming they don't get there in the pass to Watkins is batted down. They tried to hit him on the post. <laughs> Maryland gambled. They almost lost on the blitz because they did not get there. But Sean Petty saved a touchdown. Watch Watkins work over here to the middle. And number 31, Sean Petty. Guess what position Petty was playing last year at the end of the season? <laughs> He was playing quarterback because Maryland had lost four quarterbacks. So Petty had to cross train. I think his quarterback playing last year paid off sitting in where Sammy Watkins was about to fill in. Catanzaro will try yet another field goal. He's been perfect. And Clemson gets the lead back to six with 642 to go in the quarter. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Clemson with a lead here in the third quarter. 6.42 to go in the period. 19-13. And if you saw this coming, they have lottery tickets on sale all <laughs> over the place. Likely... Waits at his five, kicking into the wind. He's got a chance to return it, but now he's driven three yards deep in the end zone and will take a knee. Here's Reese Davis with an update. Reese. Texas Tech undefeated, getting its first major challenge on the road against Oklahoma. Red Raiders had the lead, but Blake Bell finds Jalen Saunders for the score. Low scoring, both defenses hanging in there, getting late in the first half, tied at seven. You know, it's really getting interesting with the... Uh, Starting to look at national championship picture with the emergence of Florida State. How long has it been since we talked about the ACC as somebody who might have a prime candidate to win it all? And this year they had two with Florida State and Clemson. Flanker screen. And of course, Maryland is doing all this crippled after last week. C.J. Brown, who is a dual threat athlete, doesn't throw it as well as Caleb Rowe, but Brandon Ross, who was their best running back, out. They expect him back. Dave Steinbaugh 
tight end out. They expect him back with a knee injury. But the two guys that are out for the year, Stephon Diggs and Deion Long, their top two receivers. So to be hanging around with Maryland, I just speaks to the depth in this program and what Randy Etzel has done. Because I went out to practice on Thursday. I said, wait, these receivers don't look like second stringers to me. Well, they're not playing like it, that's for sure. Reed shows some quickness, had a chance to hit the hole, and he did for eight yards up to the Maryland 45-yard line. This is a big drive for Maryland offensively. They've wanted to shrink this game. They have decided to huddle. They're normally a hurry up. They have decided to huddle. They have decided to shrink the clock because of not just the injuries on offense, but all of the injuries, especially in their secondary on defense. But they have only had one first down, and that was by penalty in this second half. They've gotten everything off of two turnovers forced by Randy Etzel's defense. It's time for this offense, and they're starting to get a little something going to get a drive. Fake to read. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Thrown into cover. They'll blow this dead. There was movement early. So the back Maryland up five players in count. Number 83. He never became sad after breaking the huddle. It's a dead ball foul. Five yards. Second down. Michael Colmer got a walking lead uh, at his wide receiver spot, much to the distress of Randy Edsel. The seventh penalty against the Terps. They're averaging four. It's those non-competitive penalties that. Uh, yeah, start popping some gray hairs out. I know Randy Etzel at meeting with him yesterday. He's a big guy on body language. Talked about everything they've been through. Just seems so cool. Everything's fine. Caleb Bro wants a screen. Gets to Reed. Reed waiting on a block. Cuts it back inside. It's a pretty powerful guy for a 205 pounder. And now there's a penalty marker down near midfield. I, I, I think that it might be. They might get Michael Dunn. The block, below the waist, number 84 on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Second down. That's Amba Etatawa, the wide receiver. And you cannot. This is a really good safety rule. So there was all these rules about cut block and you can't do this. If an offensive player is moving back towards the ball, so you see Etatawa moving back towards the ball, you cannot block low because the defensive players eyes are upfield. Yeah. You can go block him in the chest. You can go declete him as long as it's a legal hit, but you can't block low. I think that's a really nice change to that rule and correctly called there. Maryland hurting itself two plays in a row, second and 12 now. They need to reach the Clemson 48 for a first down, and here come the officials to huddle up again. I bet they are making sure they got the spot right. Sometimes you get a little confused of where the foul was and where you move it to. So just making sure that they have it set properly. And, and it was the Clemson sideline who realized that they hadn't adjudicated the foul properly. And they said, wait a minute. I think you got to back them up a little further. All right, second and 17 after that walk off. Plenty of time to throw. And a wide open receiver missed. Nigel King had gotten open. Rowe's throw let him out of bounds. Rowe, this one's going to, as we get close to Halloween, this one's going to haunt Rowe. Because of how long this play took to happen, a good clean hit there at the end. Good protection, though. This comes wide open, and Rowe just missed it. Got to get just a little more air on it, and believe it or not, He's got to throw that just a touch earlier as well. Now Maryland in the down that they have not delivered on very often, third and 17. Rowe under pressure. He's going to keep it. Umpire gets out of the way, and Rowe gets within three yards of a first down. Stephon Anthony, middle linebacker, covers him up. I think you're still in a position here where you feel like you've played well enough to stay in this game. So you punt this one away. Maybe you get another turnover. But Caleb Rowe missed a throw there. And, and I really like this young man. I think he's got a super bright future. Now, C.J. Brown, the senior quarterback for Maryland, was granted a sixth year of eligibility. So Rowe and Brown will be around here tussling for this position at least through next year. But that's something that Caleb Rowe, that throw there, that he missed to Nigel King. You can see him. That body language is 
he just bummed about that. He missed that throw, and that's oh, tough. That was one. a big one. That was a yeah. game changer for sure. Renfro to punt, they'll blow the whistle again. Delay of game. Offense. Five yards, fourth down. Is that three penalties and four downs? First little bit of stress I've seen on Randy Edsel. Talks about body language. <laughs> He's getting a little frustrated with these non competition fouls. Three penalties in five plays from scrimmage. The job that this Maryland staff has done for the last two years, especially last year with four quarterbacks, it, it really is, when you study it, it is it's spectacular what they've been able to do here. Beautiful kick. And just gets into the end zone. A 61 yard missile, but it will come out to the 20. It's a six point ball game. Six point Clemson lead, 340 to go third quarter. Here's Janine. Well, Mike, one thing Dabo Sweeney said about his Tigers, even though they didn't score on their last possession, he thought it was a great drive the way they moved the ball. But he gave one piece of advice to his quarterback, Taj Boyd. He said, do not get sacked again. Not only because we got to keep you healthy, we need good field possession. So just throw it away. Always good advice. They fake to Watkins. Give it off inside to D.J. Howard, who makes his first appearance. Giving McDowell a breather. McDowell's rushed for over 100 yards in this game. My advice to Taj Boyd, if I were his coach, is look for number two. And then when that play is over, go back and look for number two. And then on the next play, look for Watkins again, down here to your right. Pretty tough to go wrong with that, isn't it? Well, the Clemson inside has just not been able to move them out when it's a when it's a power running play. They haven't been able to do anything with that American uh, that Maryland front wall. And this is a Maryland front wall that struggled last week against Wake Forest getting off blocks. They just did not play well. And uh, now able to get just absolutely stuffed the inside run game of Clemson. Third and three and the crowds in it. Blitz coming. And the Terps take McDowell down for a loss. William Likely, what a great looking freshman he is, came up from the corner to mess up the timing of the play, and then he got help. Likely is five foot seven, and he's back to now return the punt. Now, how likely is it that he gets a big return here? <laughs> you start to get a little momentum, and a guy makes that was a wonderful play. He's got a little adrenaline. Give number four a block and see what happens on this return. Looks like a rugby style kick. It's going to take a good bounce for Clemson inside the Maryland 30. So likely doesn't get an opportunity. The kick goes 47 yards. So it was unlikely? <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Tonight on ESPN, sophomore Heisman hopeful headline of Pac-12 clash. BCS implications, too, as Brett Hundley and the Bruins are in Eugene to take on Marcus Mariota and the undefeated Ducks. Of course, uh, this part of the country got to see Marcus Mariota and the Ducks bandwagon when they blew through Charlottesville, Virginia. I think the final was somewhere around 400 to nothing on that one. At least it felt like it there for a bit. But Mariota... So much faster than you think. Yeah, he's a good quarterback, but he can really run. Reed with a huge hole up the middle. Spun down at the 40. It'll be enough for a first down. He is the best I've seen, although I will say uh, I haven't seen Jameis that much at Florida State to be able to, to say how he would stack up with Mariota. Uh, I, I think Jameis Winston's playing as good as anybody in the country. But right now, Maryland, they... They have to be feeling good about themselves. Can you imagine being in this game right now, down six? You've made Clemson wilt on offense with a depleted defense. Flanker screen. That'll pick up about five as Jacobs makes the catch. Well, if you're a player, 
And you've already you, you've lost both corners. Get a couple of linebackers are out. So then you lose at Wake Forest, which is which is depressing. Takes you to five and two. But you lose your quarterback, your running back, your tight end, and your top two wide receivers all in one game. Now you got Clemson coming in. Hey, good luck. It's easy to say, hey, uh, who, you know, toss it in. Come on. And it, it, it all starts with the head coach when you tear CG, CJ Brown, the injured quarterback. But Randy Edsel is just a rock, and they've built a really solid foundation here. Rowe decides to keep and gets to the 49 yard line maybe just a little shy Grady Jarrett made the stop and let's not forget Maryland was in the second quarter they were threatening and rode through a bad interception his eyes took the safety right to the ball but what if what if Maryland had stuck that in and now this game has just been right outside the, the lead has just been right outside of the grass with Maryland and here they are getting towards the fourth quarter ball in their hands with a chance to take the lead. And how disappointing for the Clemson coaching staff. Well, we, we, we have not seen much of the quarterback run with C.J. Brown, who's the more athletic of the two quarterbacks out, but Rowe does just enough to pick up the first. Well, I wouldn't say disappointed yet for the Clemson coaching staff. They lose this game. They're going to be hideously disappointed. I don't know how they wouldn't be even if they win as poorly as they played Mike and all the little things with the ball handling they said they were going to clean up. It looks maybe worse tonight than it did against Florida. So a win is great. <laughs> yes it is. And keeps them in the BCS conversation. Yes it does. Rowe floats one near side incomplete tremendous coverage. Let's go to Reese Davis, the studio update. Reese. All right, Mike, Virginia Tech and Duke. Duke with a 13-0 lead, waning seconds of the third quarter. Logan Thomas would score. Remember, the Hokies are unbeaten in conference play. Miami's already won in that division. We'll keep you up to date. Anytime you've got Duke beating Virginia Tech in football, you've got a story. What if Duke ends up playing for the ACC championship out of the Coastal Division? I know that something. sounds crazy. And that one but, is dropped. That could have picked up five or six yards. But the Coastal, you've got to assume the Atlantic Division is locked up with Florida State. But Miami, they haven't looked like a top 10 team. Let's just be honest. They, they're, they're undefeated, but they're, they're going to get a loss before it's over. Virginia Tech, defensively better, but offensively still struggling. What about the Dukies? What about David Cutcliffe? Another huge third down for Maryland. 18 seconds to go in the quarter. Can they get into Clemson territory and perhaps make it four down territory? Blitz coming. Rose spins out of it. Has time. He's got to unload and does, and it's incomplete. Pressure was coming from Quandon Christian. Who had a free run at Caleb Rowe? Well, Caleb Rowe was coming back down to Albert Reed. Watch the running back here as Rowe does a wonderful job of breaking away from Christian, who's running free. But right, th right there, Shuey ran into Albert Reed. Reed was looking for a pass interference because it looked to me like Reed was trying to run in cro uh, across in front of the quarterback. Humphreys waits at the 10 for Renfro's punt. Fair catch at the six. 44 yard kick only three seconds to go in the quarter. Clemson will start inside its 10. Let's go back to the all 22 and see what happened here. I saw Albert Reed and Shuey. Here's Shuey, the linebacker, right here. Watch as he goes, and he's going to cover Reed. Why? As Reed goes to break out, Shuey grabs a hold of his shoulder. I, I, you don't call that. I, I know Albert Reed was upset, but he, he quit his route. I, I thought there might have been defensive holding there, but good no call. Boyd starts at his own seven. McDowell. Well, he's taken some shots, got maybe a yard. Cole Ferrand made the stop. Three quarters in the books. 
Clemson, number nine in the country, with a six point lead at Maryland. Well, the only offense for Clemson with 19 points on the board as we start the fourth quarter has been Sammy Watkins, of course, had the down year last year as a sophomore, but he has been spectacular today. He has had a fumble that was turned over to Maryland, but I'm not sure you go to him right here, but I think in the fourth quarter, Clemson has to get this guy the ball. If you're afraid of throwing it down the field, then screens, have him back up, get it to him as much as you can. They bring him to this side and then throw a deep out complete to the 30 yard line of Martavis Bryant and that was a really good read by Taj Boyd they did have Sammy Watkins on the speed short outcut and the safeties came up and so Boyd went over the top to Bryant instead and that's the pattern where you really show off your arm if you can throw that pass you can throw on him then he's high mm -hmm. to Adam Humphreys the boy just doesn't look like himself and, and he's had this is his third off game in the row in a row did not play well against Boston College played really poorly especially in the first three or four series against Florida State that's just a missed throw that's a senior his third year start he just shouldn't miss that throw if you have a bad knee that's your base mm -hmm. to throw the ball and if it hurts it can really cause problems trying to move the pocket they'll throw on the run that's out of bounds however and you go back to Janine Edwards spoke to Taj Boyd before the game and he was talking about the pressure and not having as much fun and that's what this looks like to me this looks like a young man who's allowed a lot of the off the field stuff and he's he's just he's had such a good career Clemson but not a lot of the fans have been tough can he win more and it's it just really starting to show Third and ten, Maryland crowds the line. Don't need the blitz here. You can back out. And they do. They only send four. Boyd with time and throws for Bryant, and it's intercepted. Now he dropped it. Isaac Goins had great position. He had a better shot at it than Bryant did. That was not a great throw by Boyd. Yeah, this ball's forced in, in there. Had plenty of time. Ball thrown back to the inside. And Goins, who has had to step up, he was, Goins was a third string quarterback just a few weeks ago. Had good position. That ball was forced by Boyd. Poor kick, but it takes a good bounce for the Tigers. All the way down to the 25 yard line. 45 yard kick with the roll, and here's Janine Edwards. Well, Mike and Ed, you guys have been talking about Taj Boyd, and you know, I spoke to his former teammate, now Arizona Cardinal running back Andre Ellington, who's really close with Taj. They just spoke a few days ago, and he was telling me that now that Boyd has a lot more younger guys around him, it's been frustrating at times because everybody comes to him for answers. And yes, he is feeling a tremendous amount of pressure. And I think that's why Chad Morris had challenged his guys this week to help Boyd out, you know, boost him up, talk to him. So Boyd was frustrated with himself as well after last week's game, and he might be again this week. The pass intended for Etatawa is incomplete, well covered by Darius Robinson. And Randy Edsel, the former defensive back coach from the NFL, is livid that this was not pass interference. He is all over the field judge. And he's right. Well, well, now hold on a minute. The officials are told in a bang bang situation to allow that to go. We watch that in slow motion. I think Robinson got there right when the ball did. I actually think that's a good no call. Reed got a great block on the corner, fumble the football. Clemson has it picked up by Spencer Shuey. Bashad Breland came up and gave Albert Reed a shot, and the ball came loose. Well, Breland has the fresh legs because he was ejected last week in the second half against Florida State and was benched for the first half because of that ejection by rule. A wonderful block right there at clean block at the end of the line of scrimmage. Good tackle by Breland, but again, this is not a tackle that should force a fumble. Albert Reed, not unlike Roderick McDowell earlier, 
that that should not cause a fumble. Good technique by Breland, but that shouldn't normally cause the ball to pop out. Now here is where Clemson can provide the kill shot intended for German Hopper on a post. Couldn't hold it. This is where if you're a top 10 team and you're a BCS Bowl team, this is where you take advantage of the break and stick it to them. Watkins to the top of your screen. Boy, we'll keep it. It's his first carry since the first quarter gets inside the 10, and that certainly was something that they were not looking for. And how important does you were talking about whether they could answer? I think Chad Morris said, I have not called the quarterback run off of the read. This is the first time tells you the importance of this drive, especially when you're talking about a team trying to hang in there, be a part of the BCS conversation at the end of the season. McDowell takes it outside inside the five yard line. A.J. Hendy, who got the starting call of free safety today, made the stop. But remember, all day long, this has been where Clemson goes inside the 10 yard line. They make a couple of mistakes. They back up and they have to settle for a field goal. So where they had their success was if they threw the ball. Remember that fullback position right there was what had defensive coordinator Brian Stewart so worried. Quarterback draw. Taj Boyd touchdown. When push came to shove, they called number 10's number twice. And he made both of them pay off. You would have to say that is a very judicious use of his running ability. And, and it's an open conversation. How much do you run your quarterback? We see in the NFL now and, and with Taj Boyd, likely an NFL future, it's something that they've had to talk about at Clemson is how much to run it, but I think you're right. What a, what a nice use of a guy who's a little gimpy. When you needed it, he made the play. He's your best inside runner. Yes. That's just a hard run from a 225-pound quarterback. And Dabo loves it. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. 26-13 Clemson finally with some breathing room today. Taj Boyd, they love to use him. He's their best running back. Had four carries in the first half. Appeared to hurt his knee. Then they backed off of it. But lately with a couple of scrambles and a couple of quarterback draws, he is back in the running game. Likely. Nice hesitation then to cut to the outside. Tremendous future for this kid. Taken out of bounds at the 40. Here's Reese Davis. Texas Tech and Oklahoma. They're at the break. 7-7 late in the first half. Jalen Saunders having a career. Blake Bell's really struggled down the field. 76-yard touchdown here. Saunders, six catches, but 53 in the first half. Boomer up 14-7 at the break. Reese, thanks very much. 12.53 to go in this one. Maryland now down two scores. And the Terps may have to forget to take as much time off the play clock theory. As Rowe feels pressure up the middle, Josh Watson will make the tackle. I think you're right. At some point, Maryland may have to stop huddling, and here they go. They're, they're back into their hurry-up mode right on cue. I, mean, I think it was a great tactical move. Yep by Coach Edsel to, to say we're going to go into this game and try to burn as much time off this clock as we can to make it a shorter game because that's to our advantage. And it's worked. It's kept them within striking distance of the number nine team in the country. Rowe now gets some pressure. Throws underneath and dropped. He had Reed. Could have picked up a couple against the middle linebacker Stefan Anthony but couldn't hold it. Now, if you're Maryland, you got to be careful here. If, if you want a chance in this, you go three and out on this drive and punt it back. I'm not so sure Clemson doesn't burn up some clock and stick it back in the other side. Your defense has played as well as you can expect, especially with all the guys out in the secondary that they have. 
Caleb Rowe nearsighted, incomplete. A very, very difficult catch for Nigel King. He couldn't come up with it. And this is a throw that Caleb Rowe just has to make. This is a, a guy, it's a, a second year sophomore. He had to play last year as a true freshman, and this ball just. Uh, King gets there and he wants to make the play, but you you have to make just a little better throw than that. And Caleb Rowe is capable of it. I think he's got a bright future, but he misses it occasionally. Since the end of the first quarter, I think the honeymoon may be over. He's four out of 21 yeah. and two interceptions, and he's missed about three throws where he had guys wide open if he just had the proper trajectory on it. Short kick. Clemson gets away from it, lets it roll. And the Tigers will start from their own 29 yard line after a 34 yard punt. Clemson trying to assume complete control at Maryland. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com, all drive, no drama. And in part by Cadillac. We mentioned earlier yesterday was robotics day here at Maryland. These are the robots that were demonstrated at Maryland's A. James Clark School of Engineering. Things are so cool. Guess who? Sammy Watkins driven out of bounds. The 40 should be enough for a first down. I liked your play calling sequence earlier. <laughs> Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins, yeah. Sammy Watkins. Number two. Sammy yeah. Watkins. And they move, Clemson moves him around so much. The defense and of course Maryland secondary depleted. They can't really double team him or follow him around. Now up to the right, but they, they just use him. Clemson uses him so many different ways. Boyd quick out batted down and incomplete good job by Marcus Whitfield recognized the play immediately and got the hand up and knocked it down well, a little helpful here if you're Clemson on third and short you get an incomplete pass so the clock stops if you don't pick up the first and you're punting back you're saving time for Maryland Watkins only 14 catches. 163 yards. They'll go on the ground, get the first down. You have to give Boyd a lot of credit. Now for today's athletic trivia question. Taj Boyd passed the 10,000 yard mark earlier today. Who were the only other two ACC quarterbacks to accomplish that feat? I know one off the top of my head. The second one surprised me. We were talking about the team that he comes from maybe playing for the coastal blitz and it's intercepted mm. thrown right to Isaac Goins there was a miscommunication the receiver went deep Taj Boyd threw under and the guy that was left was number 17 and it hit him right in the chest Taj Boyd expected because of the blitz he expected the outside receiver to run a shorter route, but instead he takes off and Goins, because he is in zone coverage, he can look at the eyes of the quarterback. This is something that the coaches from Clemson said drove them nuts last week against Florida State when the receivers didn't know when to break off their routes versus a blitz. Maryland showing a little option route, and they give the end around to Laverne Jacobs. Jacobs going to lose a ton. Go back to that last interception. People are going to criticize Taj Boyd, but he threw exactly the pass he was supposed to throw in that situation. And, and that is what Janine was talking about when she was saying that he's getting a little frustrated with some of the youth and some of the mistakes that have been made. And that time a blitz comes and the receiver does not break off. And now Maryland Gets a big negative yardage play. That one just blew up in their face, and it's second and 21 for Caleb Rowe. Rowe under pressure. Had a receiver wide open again and threw it out of bounds. That's about four mm -hmm. that he could have completed had he gotten rid of the ball a little quicker. And, and there was pressure there, so I'll, I'll give him a little slack because yep. he has to roll to his right. But the one thing that Rowe does, he has a good arm, he has good mechanics. He's just occasionally late. That ball needed to be thrown early. There's, you, you can't make a play on it when you throw it out of bounds. But now, 
as Rowe takes a shot on that one, you have to be thinking eight to ten yards here because you're going to have to go for this on fourth down, due, down two touchdowns. Three man rush for Clemson. They still get a little pressure. This ball is thrown into double coverage and knocked away. Good defense by Travis Blanks and Bashad Breland. They had him bracketed. And so now you get to call your fourth and 21 play. I don't even know where that shows up on your menu. If you are Clemson, their defensive line is really tired right now. I, if I were Clemson, I would try to get in some new defensive linemen on this fourth and 21. This, to me, is the ball game. And if you have a bunch of guys with their hands on their hips, boy, Maryland's punting this ball away. This is, this I think is choosing to lose the ball game here. I think you have to go for this. I, I, you're down two touchdowns. I, I just don't think you're going to get many more chances here. I would agree with you until I look and see fourth and 21. If I had Sammy Watkins, I might go for it. I might throw him a short pass and hope he can get you 21 yards. I don't know that there's yeah. anybody on Maryland who's going to get you 21 yards. You're well, they're. This is the beauty of this game yes. and the beauty of sports. We can go back. It's and right. Forth it's right on the line. The fourth and 21. I understand you're not going to get it, but if you give this ball back, you need two possessions still, and there's only yeah. 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. You're right maybe, on the edge. Yeah, and, and maybe you're a little, little strong saying choosing to lose, but I, I just don't think Maryland's going to get enough possessions to win this game if they punt it away. And Randy Edsel has heard your pleas. And, and, and the timeout, and, and you can see the face on Randy Edsel. I, this is a hard choice, but I, back to what I said, I think this is the right choice. Fourth and 21. Pressure coming on Caleb Rowe. Throws it up for grabs and incomplete. They'll turn it over on downs. And, and it was that timeout, I think, that gave Clemson's defensive line because they didn't change anybody, but it gave them the breath that they needed. And Brent Venables gets the pressure he's been waiting for all game. Yeah, I think he deserves some credit here. Brent Venables had that timeout to say, all right, boys, fourth and 21, go get them. And they did. They saddled up and ripped. Good one on ESPN tonight. Heisman hopefuls and highly ranked teams. Number 12 UCLA goes against number three Oregon. Mariota and Hunley. Mariota, excuse me. Clemson takes over after Maryland fails on downs and picks up about five on first down. Well, Brent Venables in his second year as defensive coordinator, always a little excitable, but that was a big series for his defense, and it's always nice to get a high five from the head man. <laughs> yeah. Venables took some heat last year in his first year over from Oklahoma. He was dealing with a ton of injuries, starting to get a little healthy in the secondary, getting some competitive depth on that defense. <laughs> How much different is this offense when Boyd runs it? Uh, they just started calling the running plays on the last drive. They went down and scored. And now, as Clemson tried to burn this clock off up two scores, number 10's running it some more. Well, to answer your question, there's no comparison. Mm. I mean, he is he is the prime running threat. He's their biggest back by 25 pounds. He's probably faster than all of them. He has a really good feel in, in tight spaces. But remember, he got injured, injured that left knee in the first quarter, never quite looked 100 percent. But when Clemson needed it and they needed to close the door, they went back to him. Looks like there's one link left in the <laughs> chain before it's a first down. I don't know. What is the measurement for a link? Three quarters of an inch. OK. Third Depends down, on the gauge. Depends on the inch. gauge of that link. <laughs> Hadn't been able to run it much in between the guards. Boyd. Quarterback keeper. So there's we went almost a full half from the first to the fourth quarter without Taj Boyd even thinking of running the football. And now it's back to OK boys. It's you know time to decide this game. 
and give him credit. He does take a lot of pressure. He does have a lot of eyes on him. Everybody talks about him. He's hung in this ball game. He's had some bad throws. He hasn't looked like himself, but Bryant made the catch. Martavis Bryant. Great body control, got position, made the catch for 41 yards. This is not bad coverage by Isaac Goins. Just Boy. can't make the play on the ball. And you mentioned the body position, Martavis Bryant at six foot five, going against the 5'11 Goins. That was just a box out in basketball. Quarterback keeper. Two, two and a half yards. He has that ability. Boyd has that ability when he's running between the tackles where he has that little hesitation step, which allows the block to go. He's a very patient runner, has a good knack for it. And they are in no hurry, as you can imagine. I thought that when we talked to Chad Morris last year about going slow, he said that wasn't in their DNA. It sure looks like it's in their DNA now. Watkins goes in motion. McDowell, touchdown. When they send Sammy Morris in motion, it freezes so many different players because of the threat that he might get the ball with a full head of or Sammy Watkins. He gets... With, with all that speed, he's in motion and guys just freeze. It, and it is that one second for defense. If if your first step is tentative with this offense, even though the running game hasn't been spectacular, they can still do it. And you know Clemson desperately wanted a touchdown and not a field goal in this situation. It would have still been a two-score game had they gone been forced to go for a field goal but now they're up 33 13. Now for the answer to our Affleck trivia question which was Taj Boyd passed the 10,000 yard passing mark earlier today who the only other two ACC quarterbacks to accomplish the feat. Philip Rivers at NC State over 13,000 yards and Thad Lewis at Duke over 10,000 yards passing. How things work out for Philip Rivers? Is he doing okay these days? I uh, believe so. Yeah. I remember his freshman year walking in to meet with him and he was 6'5 and just built he was built like a tight end. I thought eh, this, this guy might have a chance. <laughs> Little pooch kick taken by one of the Maryland up men, and he's punished at the 32. And here's a score update. Mike Duke and Virginia Tech Blue Devils have lost 47 straight against ranked opponents, but clinging to a three-point lead. Hokies driving. Logan Thomas deflected and picked off by Kelby Brown. Four turnovers for both teams. Blue Devils clinging to that lead. It's three with three minutes to go. Red Hundley getting loose. They've got a rebuilt offensive line. Bruins and Oregon kick off in 20 minutes. Reese, there was never any question that David Cutcliffe could coach. He could coach anywhere. And he's just doing a remarkable job at Duke, the same kind of job that Steve Spurrier did decades ago. This pass caught up at the 49-yard line by Nigel King, slung out of their sidearm by Rowe. Boy, if you if get a score, get an onside kick, I know you're down three, but you've got to believe if you're Maryland. Now for Clemson, the whole key, they're going to play safeties back. They just cannot get beat deep. And they'll be coming after Caleb Rowe. He throws short this time and complete to Edatawa. Watching this offense for Maryland, it, it really just a shame that, of course, they lost their top two receivers in last week's loss to uh, Wake Forest, Stephon Diggs and Deion Long. But I'd like to see Rowe with a complete complement of receivers. Down the middle on a post and a perfect throw to Nigel King. That was the best throw he's made in this game. And he has this ability. He, he lost his way there. For a couple of quarters in this ball game, but watching him in practice the other day, he's very lively arm, good short, quick motion. 
And that is a wonderful throw. Looks to the right, comes back to the left, hit as he throws. And that one, and that one, the closest receiver to it was Nigel King, but there were three Clemson defensive backs back there with him. I mean, the scale of the losses just since last week. Quarterback, running back, tight end, and the top two wide receivers. I've never heard of that. There's C.J. Brown, the senior quarterback who has a sixth year of eligibility granted if he'd like to use it next season. I assume he will. Row throws underneath. King still on his feet as they try to rip the ball out, but he gets to the five. Corin Wiggins, instead of making the tackle, was trying to steal the ball and gave King another five yards. Wiggins has played really well. We saw earlier in the ball game some uh, issues at safety. No, that ball was down, but Wiggins came in. Looks like he's replaced Travis Blanks, and he's been in pretty good position since that early touchdown. Reed straight up the middle. Nothing there this time. And you talked about all the guys that uh, Maryland has lost. Diggs and Long, the wide receivers, they're out. They're both having surgery on their legs. But uh, C.J. Brown, the quarterback, should be able to come back. He had a concussion against Florida State, missed Virginia, came back against Wake Forest, but had a what we think to be a rib injury, but they're listing as a trunk injury. So he'll be back, and they should get Brandon Ross, their top running back, back as well. Rowe flushed out of the pocket, throws to the goal line, and Reed dropped it. You know, if you consider last year the injuries they had losing all four scholarship quarterbacks and making a linebacker into the starting quarterbacks, uh, I guess nothing is going to surprise Randy Edsel anymore. That's a catch out, but Reed's going to be bummed about that he wasn't able to make and score. But all of the assistant coaches and players we talked to talk about the steady hand of Randy Edsel. Just having a plan. Rowe, good protection. Can't find anybody. Now he throws back in the end zone. Touchdown. Edatawa. Good job by the Maryland offensive line to keep Caleb Rowe clean long enough to find somebody. Are you setting up your onside kick? We've talked about Brad Craddock, their kicker, how much he's been working with Matt Stover on his technique on PAT and field goal. Let's see what his technique is like on an onside kick. 68-yard drive in less than two minutes. And let's check in with Janine. You've got more on that outstanding kicker. Yeah, you know, I had mentioned earlier, Mike, that Craddock's personal kicking coach is the Ravens legend, Matt Stover. But before their first session, Craddock didn't know who Stover was. Let's not forget, he's from Australia. So Stover was showing him a, a technique, and he said, you know how when I kick it, I go like this? And Craddock just gave him a blank stare. And Stover looked at him, and he said, you've seen me kick, right? And he said, uh, no, actually, I haven't. <laughs> when Stover got home, when Matt Craddock he looks up Stover on the internet and he went, oh my gosh. <laughs> he talks to him before games and he's actually going to go work with him in person again next week. You never want to ask that question, don't you know who I am? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not familiar with your hits, <laughs> sir. But Craddock, he, when he was in high school, he wanted to be a kicker in college in the United States. He stayed up during his process where he's trying to get notice to kicker. He sent out tape to these coaches in the in the uh, states, and he'd have to be up till three or four in the morning to answer emails and things. And his parents said, "Okay, how long are you going to do this?" He said, "As soon as I get my first offer from a top economic school or an inter international business school, I'm going." The first school that called with a top economics and international business school was Maryland. So off he went. Whereas most of us would have said. First guy that calls, I'm gone. <laughs> no, he was, Craddock was very clear. If I'm coming this far, I want to get a top-notch education. So Maryland will go with the onside kick. Ball has to go 10 yards. It does. 
And Sammy Watkins is right there. That's the last guy. You yeah, you want to kick, kick it too. Yeah. The nation's longest win streak and a BCS title hopes are on the line tonight on ABC. Braxton Miller, number four, Ohio State, play host to Penn State. The Nittany Lions trying to pull the upset. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. I'm not so sure Penn State has the secondary to uh, keep up with Braxton Miller and those receivers but Ohio State has some flaws. No doubt. McDowell will gain maybe three or four yards. I think one of the hard things for Clemson even though they only dropped to number nine after their loss last week to Florida State is their schedule going out. Pigs would have to fly before they got into the BCS National Championship game. I just don't think it's strong enough for them to really have an argument with one loss unless a bunch of people end up with two. I, I think just they'd don't. have to fly in formation. <laughs> it has happened. Remember this is college football. However if this were 2014 and there was four teams going to the national champion chip race instead of just two I think that Dabo Sweeney's bunch could get back into that conversation just not sure they can get into the two team playoff this year McDowell again cuts it to the outside room to run and McDowell is gone 45 yards when you crowd the line of scrimmage knowing it's a run you better make the tackle across the line of scrimmage because there's nobody deep. And this is you know we earlier we were talking about that Dabo Sweeney's coaches have to be upset with how they played today. They came back and won this game. Let, let's not forget as bad as it looked at times as their quarterback got hurt they lost their quarterback run game for the better part of uh, almost the entire ball game. But to hang in there this is a good this is a good win for Clemson against a better Maryland team than I think anybody suspects they really are. You made the point about practice the other day Randy Etzel you went to practice and said you thought you would see a bunch of second string inferior athletes with all the injuries that they had and you didn't see that which means what he's trying to do here is the same thing he did with Connecticut is to build the program and he's well on his way and this is a team for Clemson obviously headed for a bowl game and if they can win out I like the BCS bowl game but for Maryland after a really tough start the first two years under Randy Edsel. They're sitting with five wins and if you look at the back half of their schedule I think they can play and beat Syracuse Virginia Tech I believe just got upset today by Duke. I think they can play and beat Boston College. I think they can play and play with and beat NC State. So this is a team in Maryland that I think easily gets into a bowl game maybe looking six seven eight wins. You get your running back healthy. You get both quarterbacks healthy. You get your tight end back. You're getting some defensive linebackers back now. I think Maryland could put a little run together. They've got nothing to be embarrassed about. The today. future is getting brighter. That's for no sure. Doubt. Don't know why Clemson has gone to this pooch kick, but that's what they have done the last three or four. Four races left in the chase for the Sprint Cup hits the home stretch. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson will lead the field into historic Martinsville Speedway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Martinsville tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. 5.02 on the fourth quarter clock. This one has been decided. We asked about the Clemson psyche. How would they respond after the whipping against Florida State? Well, it took them a while, but they have responded. Rowe likes that post pattern and completes this one. And in and, and watching Rowe, when when he gets into rhythm and fires it, he throws the ball on a line. He can be really accurate. That, he had some real bad miss throws today, but I, I still I, I like the talent of this young man. I think with a little more maturity and time, I think he could be pretty good. Three man rush, pressure comes, balls out. Clemson has it. There is also a marker down. I think that's going to be a hold. Beasley came around the corner to shake that ball loose, and it looked like Grady Jarrett, number 50, got Holding it. On the offense, number 77. That penalty declined. 
Fumble recovery by Clemson. First Vic down. Beasley does a masterful job with the hand slap on left tackle Mike Medeiros. Watch when Medeiros goes to put his hands on Beasley right there. It's so quick. It's just that little karate chop. When Medeiros, who had pretty good feet, was pretty well set up, but Beasley, it's a slap and then an uppercut to get by him. Very nice technique by Beasley, a guy who's adding and adding to his resume as one of the top pass rushers off the edge in college football. Came in with nine sacks. That was his tenth. And that's the real deal. When you see a guy who's that naturally gifted that can slap and then drop that shoulder, we saw Anthony Barr at UCLA, who may yes. be one of the best pure outside rushers in the country. But Beasley, he's added about 10 pounds of, of size as, as Cole Stout comes into the game for Clemson. He's up to almost 240 pounds, so he's added a power game to his pass rush, but he's becoming pretty good on the edge. You know, we've talked about other teams in the ACC looking at other teams around the country. How about Minnesota's win today over Nebraska? Unbelievable with Jerry Kill taking a leave of absence to deal with his epilepsy seizures, which seem to be getting more frequent, especially on game day. And I believe they're undefeated since he stepped aside. Cole Stout is into the ball game. He hands it off to D.J. Howard. Let's take a look at the standings in the ACC in the Atlantic Division. Clemson is going to go to five and one. Their problem is they're in the same division with Florida State. They would need the Seminoles to lose twice since Florida State has the tiebreaker and nobody else at 500 or above. And the problem for everybody down the stretch, Florida State, of course, they have Miami at Wake Forest, Syracuse. They have a tough one against Idaho still. Florida State does. And then they play at Florida, which obviously non-conference. I'm kidding. You but, had uh, me there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go. Wait a minute. Yeah. But uh, by middle of November, because Florida State plays two non-conference at the end of the season, by November 16th, you could know who is on this side of the division going to go to the ACC championship game. Of course, Florida, no matter what, is such a rivalry game. Anything can happen in that. And what a blow to the ACC that would be. On the offense, five men in the backfield. Now penalties decline. Fourth down. You mentioned that this was the first time in a while that for, that uh, the ACC has a legitimate team that you can say projects to the BCS title game. Right. And that in Florida State. Well, imagine if they cruise along and they're undefeated and they stub their toe against Florida. Then they'd still go to the ACC championship game. But at that point, you'd have to say, well, wait a minute. Now the door is open for other one loss teams. Fourth and two. And Stout will run it. He is going to be shy of the first down. And Clemson will turn it on, turn it over on downs. Be interesting playing this forward a little bit. Obviously, Taj Boyd is a senior. Cole Stout is a junior but it will be interesting to see where Clemson goes at the quarterback position next season. This is a team Clemson stacked with juniors sophomores and freshmen so they're going to have a lot of talent coming back but obviously Stout not the runner Taj Boyd is so we'll see how they adjust next season. And you're also looking at the potential loss of Sammy Watkins to the NFL. Maryland comes out throwing at Ottawa had a shot at it couldn't hold it. Breland was right there with him. Breland who uh, had to sit the first half because of the targeting ejection in the second half last week against Florida State. That's got to be nice. He's good. Yeah it's got to <laughs> yeah. be nice to have him back because Clemson has already lost Gary Peters who should be back with a foot injury. But Brett Venables, who went through exactly what Maryland's gone through this year with the depth problems in the, in the secondary. Pressure. And Rowe can't get away. But this is for Clemson, I think, to get into the conversation. Florida State starting to look like they did under Bobby Bowden when they first Aren't came they? in the ACC and nobody could play with them. I think the ACC is, is good and getting better. I think it's got a really good collection of coaches. Obviously, the financial package being paid out by the conference has improved drastically. 
but um, Florida State's a long way to go for everybody else it seems like third and seven row throws underneath and it's very close to the sticks but I think that the difference watching Florida State on defense and watching Clemson on defense I just don't think the the depth at every position the ability to play man coverage if you have to against a spread offense I'm just not sure Clemson is in that boat with their competitive depth on defense like Florida State is. Now Florida State from what I've seen looks like the whole package. Wouldn't it be fun to watch them play Oregon. Oh heavens. And, and and I know Alabama is Ball the start, number 77 on the offense, five yards. The unanimous number down. one right now, but I think you'd have a couple of defensive coordinators who'd be very unhappy with that matchup. <laughs> <laughs> the one from Oregon and the one from Florida exactly. State trying to defend the other exactly. team. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Jameis Winston, you know, the the pub started for him last spring when he was making those amazing plays in baseball, and it has come over to the fall and, and for good reason. He's an awfully good ball player. Rose got that sidearm slinging action. Gets this one out to the 50 yard line. Good tackle there by Spencer Shuey, senior linebacker who had to play some middle linebacker last year for uh, Clemson when Stefan Anthony was getting used to it. He bumped over to the will linebacker spot and he's one of those guys who uh, always plays faster and tougher than you think he is. They just cannot get him off the field. Well he's such a smart guy. He is always where he's supposed to be on plays. He may not be their most athletic linebacker but he certainly understands the concept of their defense. That pass caught down at the 40 for a first down. You know I, I get the plan by uh, Maryland to go slow in this ball game but as soon as this offense started going with some rhythm Caleb Rowe looks like an entirely different quarterback and, and I'm not saying it was the wrong plan by Maryland but maybe that's what this young man needed was maybe he's just better in the kind of hurry up situation. Well I think you get a different defense to look yeah. at too. Well the defense gets more vanilla. Sure. They slow down a little bit so throw this one to Calmer and unfortunately a little quick slant. And unfortunately for Maryland that's left tackle Mike Medeiros slow to get up doing everything he can to get back to the back to the there left tackle. He does 77 be careful you don't want to get your quarterback hurt here. Blitz coming. And Rowe taken down as he got to the 24 yard line. Madaris did everything he could. He's really hurting. He is in pain. Time out. 6'5, 295 pound sophomore is Mike Madaris. And I like this timeout here. You have a lot of work to do with the, the no, number two guys you've had. Why not get some more offensive plays? Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese? Mike, Ned, great 7 o'clock Eastern window coming up. Already underway on ESPN2. South Carolina, Missouri Gamecocks having to punt away their first possession. And Marcus Mariota and the Ducks getting set to take on UCLA. As soon as you guys are done, we'll get you straight to Autzen Stadium. All right, thank you, Reese. Look forward to that. How about Missouri? If they win, if they win this game, there is a real good chance they're playing in the SEC championship game. Just remarkable. Mm -hmm. 27 seconds to go here. Nobody on either sideline has certainly lost interest, that's for sure. I'll be interested to see that linebacking core from UCLA, who, who we saw a couple weeks ago, and I think maybe across the board the best group in the country. I want to see how they deal with Mariota the quarterback when he decides to keep it he's got that little extra gear that's hard to keep up with that'll be the battle I'll be watching I think he has two extra gears. I think you're right <laughs> he hits the one that gets you past the defense then he just shows off with the last one flag is down on the complete pass to Calmer. 21 seconds to go we'll check the flag I believe we're going to get offensive pass interference here. Holding on the defense, a penalty to be accepted. Ten yards, previous spot, automatic, first down. Let's 
spotted at the 15 yard line. Row to the end zone. Touchdown, Nigel King. Hanging in there till the last. Good throw by Rowe. And, and if you're going to build a program, if your idea is Randy Edsel's idea of how to build a program, you have to have plays like this. I know it's garbage time, but you've got all second string receivers, your second string quarterback. You call the timeout to be able to do the extra work. This is not about winning the game. This is about for the rest of the season. And this is about going back to practice and saying, look, when you did the right thing this way, when your technique was correct, it paid off, and it paid off in a, in a tough situation. And that is a learning moment for these guys. And for Brett Venables, it is a really, did you have to score there at the end? Dabo not happy. Well, it went from the high five earlier to the stare of death. To the head <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd rather have the high five than the head down nod with the eyes away. But uh, give Brett Venables some credit, though. This is a Clemson defense that was horrendous at about the midpoint of the season last year. Yeah. They played well enough to get into Chick fil A Bowl. They played well enough to give their team a chance to win against LSU, who was the number six team in the country at the time last year. Fell apart a little bit last week against Florida State, but uh, regrouped today against the Maryland offense that was much more game than anybody suspected they could be. Obviously, they'll go for the onside kick again. They ought to find Sammy Watkins and make sure they're not <laughs> kicking the ball to him if he's out there in the hands team this time. Because he's going to catch it. That ball looked like it was touched by Maryland before 10. Yeah, it sure did. Well, they'll have to sort it out. Abner Logan recovered. Illegal touching by the kicking team before the ball went 10 yards. First down, Clemson, a spot of illegal touching. Now you can't give the Maryland players grief for that. They're just trying to make a play. So all the Tigers will have to do is take a knee. And now the question for Clemson is that left knee injury going to swell up? Is Taj Boyd going to be 100% next week? They come back this part to this part of the country to Charlottesville for an away game against Cavaliers. That'll do it from College Park. Once again, our final score is Clemson 40, Maryland 27. For Ed Cunningham, Janine Edwards, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Now we send you across the country to Eugene, number three Oregon, number 12 UCLA, with the call. Brent.